He's in their big win for Gordo, their big quarterback, Brax Garrison. He threw for 248 yards and four TDs last week. And coming up, we'll take a look at the blueprint to victory for each of these teams. Class 3A Region 5, top two teams doing battle tonight, Green Wave Stadium in Gordo. Retirement planning, investment planning, education planning, ad valorem, blah, 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 blah. Financial planners love to show their version of a perfect retirement, but what about your perfect retirement? At AmFirst Financial, we'll get to know you first so we can make a plan for the person you'll be years from now and future you will be glad we planned ahead. So call AmFirst Financial today. You'll thank you later. It's almost that time of year again. Well, we already know the outcome. Roll Tide. No, not that game. I'm talking about scoring the Game of the Week special at Sunny King Ford. Right now, you can save $30 on any set of tires at the Quick Lane at Sunny King Ford. Just mention the Game of the Week special. Only at Sunny King Ford. That's right, Sunny King Ford on the sunny side of the street, Anniston, Oxford. Now that's a catch. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. Are you ready for some football? Then WOTM is the place for you. On Thursday nights at 7 p.m., veteran broadcaster Mickey Shadrick and former high school state champion and collegiate national champion Coach Rick Rhodes bring you live coverage of the AHSAA TV Network Game of the Week presented by Amherst. Friday nights at 7 p.m., it's the TV24 Game of the Week presented by Sunny King 4. And the action continues Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. with an encore presentation. Drummond's Company, Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week right here on WOTM. And welcome back to Thursday Night Lights. It is a fantastic evening tonight here in Gordo as we are getting set for the huge matchup between Gordo and Fayette County in this key class 3A Region 5 matchup. Now time for our Rob Walker Architects LLC blueprint to victory. Rob Walker Architects believe the architect's role extends beyond the traditional services. They serve as a close advisor and partner to the clients for the entire process. Coach, give us the blueprints to victory for tonight's game. Well, we've kind of lumped them all to, together tonight, Mickey, because both these offenses are explosive. Both average well over 40 points a game. Uh, so you're not going to stop them. you got to get turnovers. That's the first thing. Second thing is, is you got to limit those big plays and can't let those big plays go for touchdowns because the game is going to be won or lost by red zone defense. We'll take a break and come back for the kickoff. Gordo, Fayette County on the AHSAA Game of the Week presented by Amherst. game Alabama now is the time to buy with more value and selection from the power of three get more from Sarah Nissan in Birmingham Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga we know used cars better than anyone Sarah has hard to find inventory arriving daily from around the country with over 1200 pre-owned cars and trucks available to choose from we work hard to earn your business Sarah Nissan in Birmingham Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga serving Alabama since 1981 and just about set for kickoff, we just had the coin toss as well. Fayette County won the toss. They deferred. So Gordo, the home team tonight, will get the football first. There's a look at Fayette County head coach Jared Porter in his first season. We do have two first-year head coaches in this game tonight. Coach Porter was a longtime assistant. Of course, take, took over for legendary coach Walden Tucker at Fayette County. And 
His counterpart across the way is Gus Smith. He was a defensive coordinator at Mobile Christian before taking over as head coach at Gordo. By the way, Gordo playing their last home game of the season. They had a lengthy senior night ceremony down on the uh, turf here at Libby Hankins Field before the game. They had a lot of seniors. Yes. I think that thing started, what, noon on Tuesday? <laughs> a lot of proud mamas and daddies as I, well. I'd say these uh, two first-year head coaches are off to a good start. And here's a look at some of the uh, scenery from earlier. As you can see, it was a uh, always a special night, Coach. And I know you so. went through this a lot when you say goodbye to guys oh, yeah. that you've coached and been with for so long, and then they hit that senior year. Well, you know, I, I had it as a coach, had it as a father, and had it as a grandfather, grandfather as yeah. well. And it's, it's, it's very special. You know, these families uh, put a lot into their, their children's activities. You can see it's football players, band members, majorettes, cheerleaders. Uh, it's... it's, it's uh, it's a family affair. There's no question about that. Well, we mentioned the deep history between these two. This is the 76th meeting. Fayette County has the edge overall at 42-31-2. and two. Gordo won last year's meeting with a shutout as we are underway with the Sarah Automotive kickoff. Thanks for joining us tonight on Thursday Night Lights presented by our friends at Amherst. And here is Cole Somerville for... Gordo on the kickoff return. So the Green Wave will start first on offense. And, Coach, when you look at these two teams, the similarities, on paper at least, very, very close. Both offenses average right around 45, 46 points a game. Defense is giving up around 20 a game. There's two common opponents, by the way, that both these two teams have beaten by about the same margin, yeah. Tarrant and Carbon Hill. I mean, it's almost like an inter-squad game in, <laughs> some, in, some, in some respects. But I, I can assure you, uh, this will be a pretty dynamic football game. Brax Garrison, big numbers. We'll talk about that in a minute. Completing 57% of his passes on the season, but Gordo starts with a running play that goes nowhere. Good job by the defensive front there for Fayette County on the carry there was number 19, Chris Javy on Lark. Yeah, I saw big uh, Javen Westbrook get in there late on the play, just a little zone play to the inside. Uh, and that's both the defensive ends, kind of a uh, kind of a bookend right there. Stefan Hughes made the first hit. And if you've never seen Gordo, yes, you feel like you're looking at the Green Bay Packers. And this first pass of the night for Garrison is dropped. Really, Fonville was the intended receiver. He could not hold on. Well, it's just a little, it's going to be a little check mark screen to the outside. Ball's a little bit low. Uh, actually, that knee was on the ground. It would have stopped it right there had he caught it. So, brings up uh, this crucial situation. Gordo is yet to gain a yard. So, it's third down and still a full 10, maybe 11 yards to go. Garrison rolling to his left. Passes in and out of the hands of the receiver at about the 43-yard line. It was intended for Ethan Wilder. So a quick three and out here for the Greenway. Well, I, I tell you, that time Garrison squared his shoulders up and threw a strike that should have been should have been called. And, and we'll see more of Wilder. He averages about 25 yards of reception. But watch him square his shoulders right here. And that's a dart right on the money. But, uh, you know, you got to have that back hand up as a backstop to stop that ball. Wasn't able to do it, and here comes a punt. And a good kick backs up the return man to about the 25-yard line. Fair catch call for there by Cooper Sanford. So Fayette County now will send the offensive unit out, as we mentioned, averaging about 45 a game, led by quarterback Blake Johnson, the senior, that's completing about 60% of his passes coming into this game. Yeah, he's thrown for 730 yards on the year and 12 touchdown passes, which is which is outstanding. And there's a look at running back Dylan Schlurp, who is their leading rusher yeah, coming he's into the game. Yeah, he's averaging 7.2 yards to carry, 10 TDs. Well, first down, and it's Schlurp sliding over into the Wildcat formation. Takes a snap, takes off right up the middle. Good surge by that offensive line as they win the battle on first down. Five-yard gainer there for Slurb. Of course, they get in the empty set, and they try to spread out that Gordo defense and run a little fold scheme and right up the chute for pretty positive yardage on first down. Good look at Blake Johnson, the six-foot, 160-pound senior. 
coach ran through his numbers. He's thrown 12 touchdowns on the season against three interceptions. Pretty good baseball player, too, the word is. Those quarterbacks with a good arm. Oh, yeah. Second down and five. This is Slurb on the handoff this time. So Dylan Slurb has two carries, and he's got 11 yards. Our correction, that was Charles Grant on the carry, the junior running back that comes into the game averaging right at six yards a tote. Yeah, you know, if Slurb is the thunder, he's kind of the lightning. He's got eight, uh, eight TDs on the year. He averages about 5.8 yards a carry. A uh, little bit different tempo. Actually didn't get the first down. It's third and one. The spot was back at 35. So they're going to have to earn this with another yard. And they got, got that and much more as Charles Grant spins out near midfield. And he's definitely got a got a, a, a definitely a, a quick move here, quick first step. Yeah, they got in that tight bunch again, and they ran the power off tackle to the right, but really a good job uh, by Grant of seeing that backside cutback, and he really broke it over the center and the left guard uh, to pick up uh, lots of yardage, and uh, the uh, Tigers are moving the football. Yeah, the offensive line winning the battle so far. They huh? are. They are getting, getting a very good push. Second, or first down and 10 right at the 48 for the Tigers of Fayette County. Johnson with the handoff up the middle. This is Grant, good vision. And Grant's got first down yardage and much more hauled down from behind by Blaine Chandler, but another big gain on first down for the Tigers. Yeah, Fayette County doing a really good job with formations. This time they're, they're spread out. You see the speed sweep action, but the ball is given to the running back inside. That speed sweep action in front of it is going to pull those linebackers out just a little bit. And, uh, boy, he is quick as a hiccup through that hole. Yeah, he is. He's got, he's got good vision, too. You saw there he made Quartarius White. Left him in his tracks there. Not much this time for Grant as he is stopped by Cameron Prude for the Gordo defensive front. Yeah, both inside linebackers stepped up uh, in, in, into the into the fray and uh, whip the man on them and good contact at the point of attack and that's the, the best play that Gordo has had defensively so far tonight. Get a look at Coach Gus Smith who I would think is probably calling these defenses since that's his background. Second down and 10. Grant gets the call again. Nice blocking up front and Grant is down to the 30, tackled by Kyson Pate, but it's a 12-yard gain and an M first first down for Fayette County. I mean, watch right here, you're gonna see the left side of the uh, Tiger offensive line is gonna pull to the outside and a really nice job by Grant of stretching that defense and cutting back against the grain just at the right time. Gordo trying to get a player off the field and they weren't gonna be successful, so we're going to have a timeout. Timeout, Gordo. And is strictly to avoid the five-yard penalty. Hey, if you're looking to have a big time on Friday night after the game, you need to check out Alabama's largest and newest family entertainment center. We talk about different things at Big Time Entertainment every week, but if you've never visited there, you've got to check out the indoor go-kart arena. It's a fast and furious theme. It's a multi-level track, electric carts. They are quick, they are fast and it is a lot of fun. Big time entertainment located right off of I-20 in Oxford. And don't forget, after the game on Fridays, the unlimited $10 arcade card up until midnight on Friday. And we will have our big time entertainment player of the game coming up at the end of the game. Well, we've had some some good games the last couple of weeks we and with some uh, really good performances. Yeah, we really have. And this one's going to fit right into it. I mean, you can feel the, you know, the sense of urgency and, and just the atmosphere. It's a playoff type atmosphere. We mentioned the rivalry element, then you throw in the region implications. Doesn't get any better than this. Especially if, you're, if you like football over in this part of the state in West Alabama. So first and 10 is Fayette County on the march with their first offensive possession. Right up the middle goes Grant. He is 
I tell you what, he is not being denied. He's got nine yards on this first down carry. Yeah, he was hit at the line of scrimmage by Jace, uh, Jace Hathcock, but he runs right through that initial tackle. Watch right here. He's going to be hit right there, but he just runs right through it for, for big-time yardage. <laughs> I'm showing my age. I almost called Hathcock Paul Horning. He's got number five on. That goes back a day or two. Uh, so. uh, you know, whether you're a Packers fan or not, you just, you just love the uniform, the look. Definitely cool. This is the quarterback keep, and Johnson not much there on the first down carry. Of course, that's the replay where you read the end. If he widens, you keep it. If he stays inside, you give it off. But pretty well defended by Gordo that time. It did get them an am first first down, and that's all that matters. First down at the 20, so I guess we're technically in the AFS red zone also. Well, and of course, I think this is where the game's going to be won or lost. You play against offenses like these. This is the, this is the money part right here. Johnson with the give. And a good job there by Cameron Lark of Gordo. Yeah, well, well Lark is 5'9", 233 pounds. He's going to knife to the inside. Watch him come from the right of your screen. Gets underneath the guard on that side and uh, makes a nice... Uh, calf level tackle and uh, that's the way you want to start a, a series defensively that second and ten is going to look pretty good to coach Smith as he calls this next series Fayette County has had the ball now for over five minutes yeah. here on this drive pretty much exclusively running plays have they thrown the ball yet it's all running plays it has been on the ground Johnson to slur a flag is dropped our first one of those tonight Slurp is out of bounds after a short game, but going to get it a shift penalty. This is coming back. It will cost the Tigers five yards. Yeah, somebody was not set. Pete Story is our referee tonight, so we will we have him mic'd up, and we'll get the official word from Mr. Story. The illegal shift on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. We'll take a media timeout. Well, as Pete says, time for the media break. That means us. We're going to break, but we're coming back. Just underway. Green Wave Stadium here in Gordo. Sulacaga's best kept secret? No more. Harvey's on Noble is the place to go for the area's best food and drinks. Whether you're in the mood for steak, burgers, salads, seafood, or dessert. Harvey's on Noble will not disappoint, and the atmosphere is perfect for catching the big game or just relaxing after work. Harvey's is open for dinner Wednesday through Saturdays, so round up the family and we'll see you at Harvey's on Noble, downtown Sylacauga. Mr. President, Bessemer Superhighway is backed up. What are we gonna do? Are you serious? Get me the King Boys. King Boys Towing is the fastest growing tow and recovery company in Birmingham and surrounding areas for one reason. Our customers are our top priority. Whether your car has been in an accident, it's stuck in the driveway and won't start, or you just need a tow to your preferred repair shop, give us a call. Our fleet of flatbed tow trucks will provide courteous and fast service. King Boys Towing, 205-428-3235. You know, Coach, a couple weeks ago, we were over in East Alabama at Piedmont. Last week, we went down south to the coast in Fairhope. And then, to, of course, tonight, we're in West Alabama. Well, we got to go north, right? Next Thursday Absolutely. night, that's where we're headed, Spartan and Huntsville. And we haven't been up that way a whole lot. I think this, I may be wrong, but I think this may be our first Huntsville team we've had in a while. And uh, it'll be an uh, be interesting game to, to see uh, football in that part of the state. Sparkman versus Huntsville, 7 o'clock kickoff next Thursday night. Of course, Thursday Night Lights presented each week here on the AHSAA statewide network by our friends at Am First. Well, they're four yards out of the AFS red zone, but they can get a first down down at the 10. It's second and 15 after the five-yard penalty. Johnson, a little play action roll out to the right. Passes away and caught. Skipped in front of the intended receiver that time, Brian Watts. 
And let's take a look at Cameron Lark, coach. He's already making his presence felt. Just runs over the blocker. Uh, he ran right over, and, and that's that's saying something because he ran over Macarius Savage, who is 6'1", 317 pounds, and he put him on his back. So uh, great defensive effort by that young man. So with the penalty and the pressure, Cordo's defense has created a third and 15, so a chance for them to force a decision here out of Fayette County. Third and 15 again, they can get a first down at the 10. Bring a little pressure from the edge, passes away and nobody home. Miscommunication there with quarterback and receiver. Yeah, I think you said it exactly right, Mickey. It, it, it looked like they were not on the same page at all. And I tell you, Gordo's put it in a different gear down here. So fourth and 15. They showed a six-man uh, six front that last time. Brought, bought uh, both edge guys, but still good coverage in the back end as well. Fayette County will pass on a long field goal try and will line up to go for it on fourth and 15. Johnson pressured again, passes, fired downfield, incomplete. It was intended for Cooper Sanford, but there was good coverage on the back end. So the Gordo defense, boy, they did some bending there, coach, but they are they're able to get off the field without giving up any points. I mean, it, it was, I mean, it was like a tale of, of, of two cities. Once they got inside the 20, I mean, there was nothing. And of course, big pressure again. And I believe that may have been Cameron Lark again. So he has made him, himself known on the defensive side of the ball. I got a feeling he will on the other side of the ball as well, since he averages 10 yards a carry. So here's the Gordo offense back out on the field after a three and out to start the game. Cole Somerville, a late arrival, lines up at wide receiver. Garrison takes the snap and takes off. Got some blockers in front of him. And he stays on his feet across the 35, out to about the 40 for an Amherst first, first down. So there's a nice 16-yard pickup for the Gordo quarterback. You know, and uh, Garrison did, did not look that fleet of foot, but those are long strides, folks. And he gets on that edge in a hurry. Shows some strength in his lower body as well. Just a good, good run and a great start to this drive. First and 10 at the 41. Here's the give to Lark. Huge hole. Lark is out across midfield. Give him 12 yards and an am first first down and a flag coming in at the end of the play. And you see the preliminary call, a block in the back against Gordo. We'll take some of this yardage off the table as we get another look at it. There it was at the top of the screen. Great cutback by Lark. And there's another. There were, I guess, two. Block in the though. back on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So costly penalty erases a 12-yard gain by Chris Javion Lark. This brings it back to the 42. They hand it off to Lark. And Lark is going to be stopped at the 45-yard line. First Fayette defender there was senior Mason Dixon. Yeah, he stretched that thing straight to the sideline and had got good help from his safety to that side coming inside out. Interesting name there, Mason Dixon. Well, there's a historical uh, aspect to that. Mm -hmm. Second down and six from the 45. Garrison. Good, tough running across midfield. He's going to have the Amherst first down at the 
Fayette County 46. Tigers had a chance at him, didn't wrap him up. Yeah, big strong runner. Now, you know, he's, he had 348 yards coming into this game, averaging 7.1 yards a, a carry. Looks like maybe a maybe a, a glancing face mask call might have been missed. But you can see why those numbers are that good offensively and uh, good looking, good looking quarterback. Their second leading rusher from the quarterback position. Here is Lark right up the middle and give him five yards on this first down carry. So this looks like a completely different offensive team than we saw in the first series. Yeah, and of course, the, this young man has a burst. Well, you know, when you get that, when you get a big stop uh, down in the red zone, it kind of it kind of fuels your whole team right here. And uh, they're definitely playing at a, uh, a much uh, faster tempo than they did in their first uh, first drive. Second down and five. Here's Lark again right up the middle. And Lark, his forward progress will be halted just inside the 39. That's going to leave him about two, maybe three yards short of a first down. Yeah, I mean, split zone right there, not able to get uh, the kind of movement that, that they had to have from the uh, front side of that play. So third down, third and two, we'll call it, a long two for Gordo. And that's probably going to be five free ones right there. Full snap. And Coachman on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Senior Stephon Hughes came across early. So that creates five-yard mark off and an AM first first down at the 34-yard line. It's been kind of uh, ground chuck so far. Not a whole lot of uh, successful passes to this point. Garrison, a little short pass. He finds Caleb Jennings, a lot of room in front of him, and he runs right into Charles Grant. And well executed there by the Greenway. Yeah, just a little dump off off a of play. Actually kind of an RPO look. Got two blockers out in front, and they tie up the defenders long enough for him to pick up some positive yardage. See Jennings coming off the field after making the catch. So second down and about a half yard. Garrison hands it off to Lark and he's met behind the line of scrimmage. A big loss there. First man through was Gianni Harris, a senior. That's gonna move it back about two, three yards. Yeah, Lark has had good success cutting that thing back, but that, that time, there's a white jersey sitting right in that hole as young Mr. Harris said, not this time, my friend. So from second and a half yard to third and three. Thanks to the play there by Gianni Harris. Garrison rolling out to his right. He's got his receiver. He's going to have his first down. That's Willie Fonville, who dropped a pass earlier in the quarter. Sure-handed here, and it's an Amherst first down for the Greenway. Yeah, really well-designed play. This is a this is a flood route. You've got somebody deep, somebody at the bench at about 14 yards. You see five and nine both going to the sideline, and what that does is it stretches the flat defender. He goes deep. You throw short, and that's exactly what happened on that play. So Garrison, a couple of short passes for good yardage here in this drive. First and 10 at the 20, back in the AFS red zone. This time it's the green wave. Here is Garrison on the keep. Garrison inside the 10, inside the five. He's going to be in the end zone, but you did probably see that flag come in at about the five yard line. Boy, he is a big, strong 6'3", 217. They're in that quarterback off tackle. And it's going to come back. Mm. So the points are erased due to the holding penalty.
each story to give us the story. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty. Pete first down. I, think, I, I bet you Pete's been doing this a long time. Pete gets right to it. Yes, he does. So the green wave will have to overcome a holding penalty that took the first points of the game off the board. Here's the handoff. And Fonville nowhere to go. Nice job there by Fayette County defending that play. Brian Watts, Maurice Harris, two of the three Tiger defenders there to make the tackle. You know, Gordo, Gordo averages 7.8 yards a carry as a team, and they got a whole stable of, of uh, running backs. Fondle averages 9.6 yards a carry. Uh, Chris Javian Lark, he's the one He's the one in the Lark family that averages 10, 10 yards a carry. I, I'm sure that uh, Cameron could if he wanted to, but I uh, just wanted to get that one straightened out. Second down, Garrison fakes. Passes away downfield and caught at the 10 yard line right near the first down marker Cole Somerville on the receiving end of that Brax Garrison pass. Yeah, Somerville is, is going to run the clear out route and he's just going to do a little punch and pivot to the outside and a really a well thrown ball back to the outside. No underneath coverage, but it's going to be about three yards short of a first down. Good look there at. Cole Somerville, big wide receiver. So third down and three. Pearson checking out the sideline as the play clock reaches five seconds. We're under a minute to play here in this first quarter. Garrison keeps, and he's going to be down at the two-yard line. And Amherst first, first down sets up a first and goal for the Green Wave. And I tell you, this, this play here with Garrison running the football behind that good blocking has been very effective on this drive. Well, that's pure power right there. You've got a kick out block by your, by your running back. Pull the, pull the guard, pull the tackle. That's a lot of firepower going through there. And of course, when you run the quarterback, that gives you an extra blocker because there's no handoff on the play. So it looks as though Gordo is going to choose to just let the first quarter clock run out here before running a play. They're going to they're going to be, be in good shape here. First and goal right around the two yard line. And that'll be how the second quarter begins. We are at Green Wave Stadium in Gordo. Second quarter action coming up in a moment. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. Serving East Alabama for over 20 years, Samco is your local convenient, clean, and friendly gas station. Fill up your tank with gas, diesel, or your favorite snacks and drinks. Samco has 48 locations to serve you in Calhoun, Etowah, Marshall, Talladega, and Cleburne counties. Samco is a proud community leader in giving back to help support local schools in East Alabama. For your convenient, clean, and friendly gas station needs, it's Samco. It's almost that time of year again. Well, we already know the outcome. Roll Tide. No, not that game. I'm talking about scoring the Game of the Week special at Sunny King Ford. Right now, you can save $30 on any set of tires at the Quick Lane at Sunny King Ford. Just mention the Game of the Week special. Only at Sunny King Ford. That's right, Sunny King Ford on the sunny side of the street, Anniston, Oxford. Now that's a catch. And we'd like to thank our friends again this week at Harvey's on Noble, located in Sylacauga. Outstanding menu, outstanding atmosphere. We uh, enjoy the food each and every week here on Thursday Night Lights in our, as part of our pregame routine. Yes, it is. How are the chicken fingers? Excellent. As was the hamburger steak. Which is what I had last week. Yes. And we begin the second quarter with a touchdown as 
Brax Garrison, I think fittingly, is the ball carrier that gets the points. He played such a key role on that drive. Well, you, you know, you saw the same play repeated over and over, that off-tackle power play. You're going to see right here. Watch watch the green shirts that are right there. Really no pullers this time. Just a really nice job by the right side of the offensive line, sealing the interior defense, a good kick-out block. And, of course, that's 217 pounds running behind their pads down there. Really well executed. And your extra point is perfect from Caleb Jennings. So it is the home team, senior night here in Gordo playing their final home game of the season against their big rivals from Fayette County. And thanks to this two yard run by Brax Harrison, the Green Wave has the lead. Quite an impressive drive. Uh, you know, mainly run, but a good mix of some key passes right there. And uh, boy, this game turned around in a hurry. So Fayette County will get it back. And, you know, we saw them move the ball very effectively. They just kind of bogged down in the red zone. Well, and uh, and, and Gordo found uh, something that uh, they, they really like going to the quarterback runs. And um, uh, Fayette County is going to have to come up with an answer for it. So 7 nothing here, right at the top of the second quarter between these two West Alabama rivals. Gordo with four state championships in school history. Bay County won one state championship under Walden Tucker back in 1996. And went to the finals oh, about four or five years ago. And the Sarah Automotive kickoff is going to go out of bounds and I guarantee you the happiest man on the field for that was Dylan Slur because he was sitting there watching it going oh please please I thought for a minute the thing was going to die <laughs> in about the three yard line and well we'll see how how the Tigers counter free right kicking here. fraction on the kicking team Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. So that gives Fayette County great field position. And, you know, coach, these are two great programs. They both have won state championships, championship pedigree on, in both these schools. They're looking like definite factors in class 3A, and they're both been highly ranked all year. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gordo is number two, Fayette County is number nine. Football is important in these communities, has, has been for a long time. Could look at that tight bunch again here to the right side of your screen. Bay County using just about all of the play clock here, and still a little uh, confusion on the on the play as Johnson was looking for the running back to hand the ball to, and just had to keep it himself. Yeah, uh, it, it looked like that. Uh, really, the blocking did go to the right. Uh, Johnson went to his left. Three-yard game, second and seven. Green Wave brings some extra defenders, and Charles Grant continues his fantastic first half here as he's out across the 40. This young man came to play tonight, and it is another am first first down. If you watch right here, watch him bounce to the outside to his right, and you see there's no green shirt to the outside until he gets to the cornerback. Uh, in, in deep in the secondary and the reason is is that tight bunch to the other side the Gordo defense has to shift over it leaves them a little bit short back there to that single receiver side as our generation would say this young man ate his Wheaties this morning <laughs> and he gets the, the carry again but about four green jerseys wrapping him up but he still still fights coach he's just a physical physical young young running back and you know, a lot of guys would have got stopped for no gain there. He got two yards out of it. Yeah, you know, he, he is uh, very much uh, like Chris, Chris Javian Lark for uh, Gordo. They're, they're similar type runners and uh, very, very good, tough running. Mickey, I'm really pretty proud of myself. Uh, when I saw 15 in the secondary, I didn't call Cortland Taylor Bart Starr. So that was, that was pretty good on my you're, part. You're getting life. better. <laughs> Second down and eight. This time the green wave wraps up Mr. Grant. 
Finishing him off was number 30, Blaine Chandler, but there was another Greenway defender that got there early. Let's see if we can yeah, see. I think it's Cameron Prude. You can see that he's, he's going to stunt the A-gap. The back block uh, by the center coming back to him does not occur, and he's, he's in the backfield untouched and just disrupts the whole timing of the play. You almost have to bring a little extra to the table to tackle number six, and uh, they did that time. So third down and 11. Full snap. The coach went on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. That will not be a pleasant frame of film for that young man to take a look at uh, when they review the game film. Third and 11 is pretty tough, and you make it a little easier with this penalty. Absolutely. Third and six now. At the 36, which could be four down territory for these Fayette County Tigers. Johnson leaves it with his tailback, and there's nowhere to go for Slurb. And once again, your guy, number 53, Cameron Prude, had some good penetration on the play. I tell you what, he has made himself known tonight. Uh, a 5'8", 245-pound sophomore. I think uh, the, uh, Cameron Lark had the first shot at him. He missed him, but uh, his buddy did not. Jace Hathcock finishing off the play. So here we go, fourth down. And Fayette County lining up to go for it here. Fourth and five. And we've got a timeout going to be taken here. Yeah, I think there was some confusion up front. Uh, timeout and Fayette. That's their first timeout. As to where exactly big uh, Macarius Savage was supposed to be. So a little more time to ponder the call here on fourth and five. You know, we mentioned these two undefeated in region five. It, coach, it's pretty much them and everyone else. You do see Winfield there with a five and one overall record, two and one, Oatman at three and four, three and one. Uh, but the winner of this game pretty much is going to be your region champion. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, barring something unexpected, there you see the top 10. Of course, Gordo, Gordo at number two, Fayette County at number nine. So, I mean, uh, these are two elite teams in class 3A football. Um, we saw Piedmont a couple weeks ago. We know how good, how good they are. Uh, but these two teams, they, they will be in the hunt all the way. So let's see what the Tigers come up with here on fourth and five after the timeout. Power formation to the right, the short side of the field. They will hand it off that way. Slurb just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. So the Gordo defense, this is two consecutive Fayette County drives that look good, but bogged down on fourth down. Yeah, they went unbalanced into the into the boundary. Thought they had numbers over there, but the handoff did not appear to be crisp. It, it was slow developing right there that you can see that the ball is inside to begin with. I think that slowed the play down just a little bit, but very, very good defense by the Gordo Green Wave as well. De'Aaron Spain and Jace Hathcock. Good job on the play. So the Gordo defense twice giving up some yardage, but still a goose egg on that scoreboard for Fayette County. Here's the pass out to Somerville. And this is defended very well by Fayette County. Yeah, I think Charles Grant came up, uh, came up from his cornerback position, read the screen very quickly, and was there right when the ball got there. Two-way player here for Coach Jared Porter. Second down and nine. Kind of a key situation, I think, for this Fayette County defense. Garrison, big collision there. 
with Javen Westbrook, who looks like his shoulder got dinged on the play. Yeah, I think he's uh, he immediately went to the sideline tapping his helmet and, and that right arm was limp. I mean, you could hear the pads pop all the way uh, from where we are. A big hit. And I tell you, if they lose uh, Westbrook, that that'll that'll hurt. 6'4", 220 senior with three sacks. Watch this hit right here. That's a big hit. Immediate, immediately drop that right shoulder. Yep. Garrison's pass or wide open there Somerville is he's still on his feet finally taken down at about the 46 yard line just coach just too much cushion there for Somerville that was kind of an easy toss for Garrison yeah the, you know I think they probably run the inside receiver to that side inside and then to the corner yeah, it looks like it's man coverage underneath so there's no flat defender and of course Somerville's a handful 6'4 202 it's already got a couple offers from Troy UNA. He's regarded by many as the best receiver in the entire Tuscaloosa area. And first, first down for Gordo as the green wave. Rolling again here. Garrison, quick pass to Somerville, but this one is incomplete. So first mistake of the night there for this young man in the passing game. Yeah, he tried to hurry it just a little bit. Didn't get his backside loaded up real, real well. The ball is either going to sail or it's going to be short in that time. It was a little bit short. Gordo, as we mentioned, six and one. Fayette County undefeated at six and oh. The only loss for either of these teams. Week two, Gordo lost to Bibb County 56-21. Yeah. Second down and 10, Garrison. Quick release, Somerville again. And Somerville fighting for yardage after the catch. Slurb got a hold of him down low, had some help from Hollis Strawbridge. And of course, you know, the physical part of this game is, is always so important. And you're starting to see uh, some broken tackles here. We've seen this a lot. A green shirt makes a play. Time out. Very physical play move. Time and out. two, three yards afterwards, he, he comes down. Uh, you know, yardage after Time contact. Out. So we have a timeout on the field. At the 6.20 mark of the second quarter. Called by Gordo. You know, th those yaks uh, cannot be uh, uh, underestimated right there. It's a, it's a stat that coaches always keep and very physical running by, uh, <clears throat> by Gordo, not just on this drive, but on the scoring drive as well. Key series here for both these teams is we're already near the midway point of the second quarter. This game has moved right along, Mickey. Gordo keeping it on the ground, and even in the passing game, most of the passes have been short. Almost extended handoff type of passes. Third down and two here for the Green Wave. Fayette County brings a couple of extra run defenders, but Garrison just, you've mentioned it, just too much power there. He just extends that arm and picks up the M first first down. Yeah, this is a pretty athletic move right here. He's hit low, he goes forward, but has the presence of mind to, you know, to keep his bounce. Watch this, this knee will not touch. A little reverse flip right there and brings that ball forward and gets that extra yardage. Another timeout, 6-12 here to go in the first half. Gordo on the move with a 7-0 lead. Retirement planning, investment planning, education planning, ad valorem, blah, 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 blah. blah. Financial planners love to show their version of a perfect retirement, but what about your perfect retirement? At AmFirst Financial, we'll get to know you first so we can make a plan for the person you'll be years from now. And future you will be glad we planned ahead. So call AmFirst Financial today. You'll thank you later. Rightway Auto is offering cash on the spot for cars, trucks, and SUVs. Our inventory is low, and to turn that around, we are buying pre-owned vehicles in good shape. Visit our two locations today on the Motor Mile in Aniston or Highway 21 in Mumford. We will buy your car even if you don't buy ours. 
Right Way Auto is offering cash on the spot for cars, trucks, and SUVs. Cash on the spot today for your vehicle at Right Way Auto Sales in Anniston and Munford. Hello, Corsi HSAA Game of the Week presented by Amherst being seen tonight on My68. And for the My68 viewers coming up tomorrow night, Friday Night Rivals matchup. Uh, Birmingham matchup between Pleasant Grove and Fairfield. 7 o'clock kickoff tomorrow night, and the game will re-air Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on WOTM. And uh, Pleasant Grove is rolling again. They've got another really good football team. Green, Ray, Green Wave is rolling as well here in this first half. Been very impressed with that young man uh, so far tonight. Of course, he had to wait his turn. Tanner Bailey, the great quarterback they had that uh, signed with South Carolina, has been their quarterback for the last several years. So first down at the 36, here is Lark. Lark with close to 10 yards. He's right near the first down marker. Tackle made there by Brian Watts. Well, you can see there's no edge defender here either. Good job of blocking on the interior and a really, really nice job uh, by number 50, uh, Kedron Hughes, to seal that edge. Looks like we may have a flag, though. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Maybe too good a job. So that would have either been a first down or a second short. Instead, we get another holding call back up the green wave. Back to the 45. Here's Lark up the middle, kind of lost his footing and falls forward for only a gain of one. Yeah, it looks like he tried to bounce it outside and then tried to go back inside and just really got ahead of himself just a little bit. And all of a sudden, Gordo finds themselves in really long yardage. Second down, and we'll call it 19. Garrison setting up the screen pass. Fonville's got it. Well, that was a great play call against the Blitz. Fonville fighting his way down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, this is the quick screen again. A really nice job to kick out on that corner. And again, I think that's uh, number 50 again, uh, Kedron Hughes. It makes that key block to spring uh, uh, Fonville. And it looks like we've got uh, some more laundry. Yep. Well, Mickey, we have been plagued by this this year. A lot of our games. Blocking the back on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat for second down. So Gordo kind of their own worst enemy here on what looked like a potentially two-score game on the way, but I got to overcome another penalty. Yeah, and that's, now it's going to wouldn't be a bit surprised maybe to try to get something to Somerville, see if he can take advantage of that 6-4 frame. And the football hits the ground. Boy, this, this Gordo drive is just falling apart. Uh, you know, it wasn't too long ago they were, they were you know, inside the 25, and now they're, they're back in their own territory. Oh, momentum can be a very slippery entity to try to get a hold of, I, I can tell you. The county's okay with what's happening here. They, oh, yeah. They were, looked like they were about to go down two scores. Yeah. And we're going to have another penalty. Uh, I think the wide receiver left early. Yeah, they definitely had movement. Wide receiver standing two feet from the official. Kind of hard to get away with that one. Full snap. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. So you what th do you think here, Coach? Just take a knee and punt? <laughs> I, th I think I would throw one deep 
to Cole Somerville and see if he can use that 6-4 frame to get up there and muscle the ball or maybe, who knows, maybe get an interference call. I'll tell you, these last few plays will be a clinic and whatnot and how to totally stop your own drive. I think it's third down in uh, the Mississippi line. Yep. Garrison rolling out. Throws downfield. It is picked at the 45. And this was the danger of trying to put the ball in the air in this situation. And Hollis Strawbridge comes up with the interception. And that's going to give Fayette County very good field position. What a flip of the script here. Yeah, try to get outside of the uh, pressure, but pretty good pressure by Fayette County. Have to hurry, hurry to throw just a little bit and just way over through uh, Cole Somerville. Nice heads up play there uh, by the corner to that side. So Straw a chance bridge. for Fayette County here before halftime. Coach to possibly tie this game. Yeah, plenty of time, 342 and pretty good field position. So first and 10 at the 48, excellent field position. Here is Grant. And Grant, another good surge. He's right near the first down marker. I think they're going to spot him for an Amherst first down. Yeah, good slashing run right here. Just another, you know, off tackle power play. Look at that cutback right there. Just really a nice job. Good vision right here. Takes the hit and keeps moving forward. You know, Grant's 5'7", 150 now, but he runs a lot bigger than he that. He sure does. He doesn't know it. <laughs> Got a equipment issue. The left knee pad maybe of Fayette County's Deontay Watson had to come out of the game. First and 10, handoff. This is Grant. Nice job that time by Cameron Lark. Yeah, of course, you know, anytime you pull to lead through, which is exactly what uh, Fed County did that time, you've got to be able to seal the backside of the defense, and Lark would have none of it. Uh, added another tackle to a pretty good performance that he's had tonight. So second down and eight, just inside the 40. Johnson, pass is picked, intercepted by Lark. Our correction, that is Max Stevenson, and Stevenson is going to take it back to around the one-yard line. I think the ball came loose after he was already down, but what a, what a great play there by Max Stevenson. Well, that's a heck of an interception now. I mean, that ball's on him in a hurry, and he gets right up, and that ball's a little bit behind him. Just a great job. He takes it all the way down inside the one before Johnson is able to trip him up. That ball does come out, but I think he was going to be ruled down by contact. He's definitely ruled down, but he was reaching out with that football. Yes, he that was. was a bang, bang play. And for Fayette County, as you see Blake Johnson kind of limping off the field. So first down, Garrison takes a snap. And waiting for the signal. Finally, we get the Harvey's on Noble touchdown signal for Gordo. So the big interception by Max Stevenson. And then here you go, Gordo. With they have, they get that two score lead after all. Yeah, you know it's kind of funny. Sometimes your <laughs> your best offense is your defense. Just a a great pick right there. And of course that young man on the other side, he's got to turn the page. Get ready, for, get ready for the next one. And the extra point from Caleb Jennings is perfect again, the Sonny King extra point. So that makes it a 14 to nothing game as Gordo gets the interception from Max Stevenson, which you're right. He used all of his height and reach right there, Coach. Yeah, I mean, he's right in the middle of your screen right there. And, watch, and that ball was behind him, too. And uh, showed pretty good, uh, pretty good wheels here at the end. Just a great, great play. And 
no. Follow up right there with the touchdown. And what a big swing for the Gordo Green Wave. I do want to say that ball did come out a little bit early. It looked like it did. just trying to reach out and break the plane, which oftentimes that is when you do see these fumbles at the goal line. That ball looks like it's clearly out a little bit early. Now the ball is going to be recovered in the end zone uh, by a uh, Gordo player. It can hit the, hit the boundary. But now, but it does look, it, but it does look like the ball, you know, hit the white on the side. So a little bit of controversy. But it's 14 to nothing. And the Sunny King, or the Sarah Automotive kickoff. And return out to about the 29-yard line by Dylan Slurb. So 2.04 now to play in the first half. A couple of timeouts. How aggressive do you play this here if you're Fayette County? Well, I think you, I think you want to get something positive going if for no other reason. That young man right there. Um, you know, Blake Johnson's got to get it back up on that horse and ride again and get something positive. Whether, whether that it, it, it leads to points or not, they want to move the ball and get some confidence and a little momentum going into halftime because uh, this game has turned around pretty quickly. So here is good to see Johnson back out on the field after limping off after that interception. He was looking deep. Now turns and fires downfield and incomplete. Yeah, he uh, had somebody down his right sideline and kind of reversed his field and then tried to go late back down the middle of the field, which could be kind of dangerous. Took a big hit at the end of that play as well. And, you know, you can see the reason there. You want to try to get a big one, get your quarterback some confidence back again. Uh, but it does put them in a long yardage situation here. And, Again, you want to try to build something positive, get a drive going. Of course, get points if you can. Gordo would take a couple more incompletions and get the ball back. Oh, absolutely. On the ground, nothing. Number 53, Cameron Prude, living in the backfield tonight. That's that inside stun again. And <laughs> I don't know, Mickey said nothing. I don't know. There was a lot of Cameron Prude. I mean, he doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage right there. Bam. That's two yards deep in the backfield, and one, two, three, four other green shirts there. So that running game that was so promising for Fayette County early in this game, and and uh, even on their last uh, drive before the interception, nothing that time. Mr. Prude is a handful tonight for this Fayette County offensive line. Third down and 12. Can they keep it on the ground again, and Grant Boy, he fights for anything he can get. Young I man picked you. up a couple of yards after being wrapped up right after the handoff. Yeah, that's a tough 150 pounds. But, you know, you know, as you look at the line play right here, you can just see, I mean, those white shirts are, they're getting, they're getting stood straight up and not gaining an inch. Gordo is winning the line of scrimmage pretty consistently. Now. I'm out. Gordo. Gordo wants to save as much of the clock as possible. So they call their, call the time out here. Well, one of the advantages that, that you have, you know, when you've got uh, receivers, and, and Gordo has two really good ones, you know, you want to have time to just to chunk one up and give a guy a chance to go up and get one. And two, you know, a, a cleanly executed punt is no given. No, absolutely. Well. And if it's a shank, if it's not a long punt. You know, return. I mean, may load up and try to go get one. I mean, I, I think Fayette is a little bit uh, out of rhythm right now. If they do get to a fourth down, they may try to go. May try to go get one. You know, still a lot of football to play in this game. However, the momentum is on the side of the Green Wave, and I think Coach Smith wants to try to milk it as much as he can here in the final minute of this first half. Oh, absolutely. And uh, he's got to like the way that uh, that his team has played. Defense has really set the tone and offense has run the ball extremely well and mixed in a few timely passes. And it's a short punt. 
So it's yeah, going to be, be out of bounds as the official marks it off somewhere around midfield. Yeah, excellent field position. So here's the Gordo offense led by this young man, Brax Garrison, who's had a great first half. They're going to come out with 45 seconds. And by, and by our account, they've got one timeout left to work with. Still think they'll work primarily through the airwaves right here. Officials let them play now. First and ten. From right at midfield, Garrison. Downfield, he had his receiver open at the 34-yard line, Jace Hathcock. Yeah, he ran a, ran a little wheel route and was kind of trailing the outside receiver. The, the secondary had sunk pretty good. You can see he turns to the outside, and the ball really is not a bad throw, just a little bit low. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, probably Hathcock had a little bit of trouble picking the ball up once he made his cut. Second and ten. Short pass for Garrison is complete at the 46. And the clock continues to run. Third down and six. Again, Gordo does have one timeout remaining. They hurry up and will try to run the play and save the timeout. Third and six. Garrison steps up. We'll try to run for it. He's going to get out of bounds a couple of yards short of the first down at the 42. So there'll be 13 seconds left. Yeah, a lot of valuable time that uh, went off the board on, on, on that play. Um, not just after the snap either. They really were a little bit more deliberate than I, than I thought they would be. Uh, in this uh, time precious situation. Actually, fourth and three for Gordo. Garrison dropping back. Here comes the pressure. Maurice Harris coming after him. Pass is caught down at the 26 yard line. Wide open was Jace Hathcock. That's an Amherst first down. Six seconds left. Yeah, well, the, the fad defense is going to sink and sink and sink to take away the deep ball. Really a great presence right here and a really, really good throw considering all the duress that he was under. Time for at least one play. Keep in mind, they've got uh, six foot four Cole Somerville, who is in the. Uh, slot to the top of the screen or to excuse me to the left side of the screen Garrison under pressure again and he is going to sling the ball as he was being sacked so that's going to be a flag loss of down one second remaining and there's that number seven for Fayette County Stefan Hughes who's had a couple of good plays in the yeah, backfield had, had three sacks coming coming in the night you're going to watch him right up the chute comes right inside of the running back to that side uh, Beat uh, Chris Javian Lark right off the bat with a nice inside move and just no chance at all for Garrison to get that ball out. I would say young Mr. Hughes has been in a weight room. Intentional grounding on the offense. Five yard penalty, loss of down. It'll be second down. Gordo will take their final timeout. So Gordo calls timeout with one second. You know, and it looks like he's probably had a few meals at a Harvey's on Noble <laughs> along with that weight room <laughs> work, you know? He, uh, he, he definitely is. He's been eating good and working hard. He's a healthy looking young man, that's for sure. So what's the purpose of the timeout here, Coach? I think you're going to set up, try to get, try to get a ball in the end zone. I, you know, I still, I still think that Somerville is going to come into play here. At, you know, at some point, six four two zero two. It's pretty good height as I look at the, um, at the Fayette secondary. Uh, you know, he's got at least four inches on, on the tallest secondary defender for, Fayette County. 
So it's 14 nothing. You feel like 14 points really separates these two teams. Do you feel like the 14 points on the scoreboard really separate these two teams? Is it? Uh, you know, I think after that first drive, I think Gordon's pretty well had their way tonight. I mean, I think they've dominated the game. Um, you know, the, you know, the the intentional grounding was very helpful, and it, it did save them one second. Garrison still on his feet, gets the pass away to Somerville, and he will be wrapped up and taken down by Noah Fenton. So that will be the end of the first half, and his coach just said it was quite a first half for the, the men in green as the Gordo Green Wave on senior night, final home game of the season here at Libby Hankins Field. They have had their way in this first half, and they take a 14 to nothing lead into the locker room over their rivals from Fayette County. Yeah, you know, once they stopped that first drive, it was it was except for a few good runs uh, by Charles Grant. It was it was uh, almost all uh, green wave here in the first half. So we will see if we can catch up with Gordo coach Gus Smith if we can meet up with him before he gets into the locker room. We will keep it here for just a moment. 14 nothing. Greenway with the lead over the Tigers of Fayette County. Big first half for quarterback Max Stevenson and we are now joined by Gordo coach Gus Smith. Coach, thanks for taking a minute to speak with us before you head into the locker room. Uh, after that first drive by Fayette County, you guys seem to dominate the first half. I'll say that again. I'm sorry, man. After that first drive by Fayette County, it seemed as though you guys really were able to dominate this football game the rest of the first half. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say dominate it yet, but we're playing pretty well. Um, you know, that's what we talked about all week, just bend but don't break. Uh, that's exactly what we're doing right now. Those guys are good. They're playing hard. And, uh, you know, our guys are getting after it a little bit right now. And, uh, and like I'm fixing to tell them at halftime, we're not happy right now. We're, I mean, this, I mean, we thought the score would be like this. This is what we expected. So, uh, you know, we're not satisfied right now. Coach, uh, anything particular from an X and O standpoint that you're going to try to emphasize something we may look for in the second half? Well, I wish we could go up a couple more scores than uh, just milk the clock, but uh, that probably won't happen because I'm sure they're going to make some adjustments at halftime. Those guys over there at Fayette do a great job coaching, and, um, you know, I expect it to be tight here in the second half. All right, Coach, we'll let you get with your team. Thank you for taking a moment. Yeah, thank you all for doing a great job. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. That is Gordo head coach Gus Smith joining us here at halftime. His team looking good here in this first half. A 14-0 lead here at halftime. You're watching Thursday Night Lights from Gordo. The AHSAA Game of the Week key Class 3A Region 5 matchup. It is the Green Wave with the lead here at halftime. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Alabama. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the AHSAA. Are you ready for some football? Then WOTM is the place for you. On Thursday nights at 7 p.m., veteran broadcaster Mickey Shadrick and former high school state champion and collegiate national champion Coach Rick Rhodes bring you live coverage of the AHSAA TV Network Game of the Week presented by Amherst. Friday nights at 7 p.m., it's the TV24 Game of the Week presented by Sunny King 4. And the action continues Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. with an encore presentation. Drummond's Company, Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week right here on WOTM. It's almost that time of year again. Well, we already know the outcome. Roll Tide. No, not that game. I'm talking about scoring the Game of the Week special at Sunny King Ford. Right now, you can save $30 on any set of tires at the Quick Lane at Sunny King Ford. Just mention the Game of the Week special. Only at Sunny King Ford. That's right, Sunny King Ford on the sunny side of the street, Aniston, Oxford. Now that's a catch. Retirement planning, investment planning, 
education planning, ad valorem, blah, 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 blah. Financial planners love to show their version of a perfect retirement, but what about your perfect retirement? At AmFirst Financial, we'll get to know you first so we can make a plan for the person you'll be years from now, and future you will be glad we planned ahead. So call AmFirst Financial today. You'll thank you later. Get in the game, Alabama. Now is the time to buy with more value and selection from the power of three. Get more from Sarah Nissan in Birmingham, Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman, and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga. We know used cars better than anyone. Sarah has hard-to-find inventory arriving daily from around the country with over 1,200 pre-owned cars and trucks available to choose from. We work hard to earn your business. Sarah Nissan in Birmingham, Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman, and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga. Serving Alabama since 1981. Sylacauga's best kept secret? No more. Harvey's Own Noble is the place to go for the area's best food and drinks. Whether you're in the mood for steak, burgers, salad, seafood, or dessert, Harvey's Own Noble will not disappoint, and the atmosphere is perfect for catching the big game or just relaxing after work. Harvey's is open for dinner Wednesday through Saturdays, so round up the family and we'll see you at Harvey's Own Noble, downtown Sylacauga. And we are at halftime, Green Wave Stadium in Gordo between Gordo and Fayette County here on the AHSAA Game of the Week. And uh, time now to turn things over to AHSAA Weekly host Susan Scott Carruthers, who has our AM First Halftime Show. everyone and welcome to the AM First Halftime Report on WOTM. I'm Susan Carruthers. Right now we're going to take you to some of the highlights from across the state, but be sure to catch our show on WOTM every Wednesday night at 6.30. Now let's look in on Isabella vs. B.B. Comer. Little inside handoff to Lee. He's got running room and he may be gone. And he is. He's running away from the defender's touchdown. Great, great play for the Isabel. We get Garrett in the backfield. They give it to, excuse me, Garrett. Pull, uh, Harvey pulls it out. And there he goes again. <laughs> Nobody will touch him. Harvey for a Tiger touchdown from 65 yards. And Maury Harris in there. And he's got the football. And Harris dodging tacklers. There he goes. Harris inside the 2015 touchdown. For Maury Harris. Harvey. From 15 to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. It's a touchdown for Devin Harvey. And it's a touchdown untouched. Now on to Orange Beach at St. Michael's. Or Orange Beach had a had a huge game and and you see here it was uh, Murphy with the uh, pass to Cortez and then Fayupu again. What a game he had! Four touchdown runs for this young man. Tonight. And and that that fourth down pass to Sexton was one of the big plays in the game. And that that touchdown afterwards, again, Orange Beach will answer right back. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a track meet to the end, and it and it was. And then another run here, Ezra Sexton taking it the distance in for the touchdown and. If you like big play football, this was your game because there were a ton of them. And this was a third and 20. Yeah. You know, we took Turner to Riddell. I was just going to say, we talked about big chunk plays. Well, there are a lot of chunks taken tonight, I can tell you, Mickey. There's another one right here. Uh, and you know, it was a lot, it, you know, it were, we saw some familiar names, but there were a lot of different guys, too, that made, made plays. Uh, uh, you know, Corte, that, that was his long play of the night. And then, of course, this is going to be a kickoff return that. We thought might turn everything around for the night, but again, St. Michael will answer. And here is another Fayupu touchdown. Again, four for this young man tonight. He contributed in so many ways. And then again, when you thought Orange Beach was out, they get the, the touchdown pass to Riddell. And then here is the huge fourth down play that pretty much sealed the deal for St. Michael and got him the win and got their coach all excited. Next, we go to Gulf Shores at Williamson. 22, Gardner with a fair catch, lost the handle on it, recovered by the Lions. 38 now, first and 10, snap over the head of Williams, and ball is loose, picked up by Gulf Shores, rumbling ahead, Otto Brewer, we've called his name a bunch today, will he get the touchdown? He's out of bounds inside the five. They named a building after him on the interstate. Yeah. 
I love that. Didn't happen until he started being a part of Friday Night Rivals, right? That's right. Give Gardner, touchdown Dolphins. Mitch Rodriguez was a line coach at Southern Miss, Louisiana and Colorado as well. Around the corner, here goes Ronnie Royal. Royal, touchdown Dolphins. And now on to Hanley versus Aniston. Now on to Northside versus Comer. Green's gonna keep it, breaks the line of scrimmage, trying to find that room and does. 15, 10, five, touchdown, Brayton Green. Another Ox Foundation Solutions touchdown. And the Rams go back and forth. This is a scoring fest, 28 yards on the quarterback keeper. Peterson getting some pressure, makes the throw catch. Tyson Hill into the end zone, touchdown, Yellow Jackets, another Ox Foundation Solutions touchdown. It's because the bats are against the wall for their black and gold defense. Three of seven on third down. Green looking to throw, tries to find a man and does, touchdown, Rams. Jaden Roberts with the Ox Foundation Solution touchdown, 15-yard connection for the score. 0 for 4 so far on third down conversions are the corner Yellow Jackets. And this is the best time, if any, to see if they can get their first conversion. Peterson this time, and wow, he throws it behind. Picked up into the end zone, touchdown Rams. Wow, Parsons picks up the loose ball and Ox Foundation Solutions touchdown. We'll be right back after this with even more highlights from around the state. You're watching the Halftime Show brought to you by Amherst. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amfirst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. I need the king, boys. Don't call two clowns in a tow truck when you're dreaming of them king, boys. Serving East Alabama for over 20 years, Samco is your local convenient, clean, and friendly gas station. Fill up your tank with gas, diesel, or your favorite snacks and drinks. Samco has 48 locations to serve you in Calhoun, Etowah, Marshall, Talladega, and Cleburne counties. Samco is a proud community leader in giving back to help support local schools in East Alabama. For your convenient, clean, and friendly gas station needs, it's Samco. Sulaconga's best kept secret? No more. Harvey's on Noble is the place to go for the area's best food and drinks. Whether you're in the mood for steak, burgers, salad, seafood, or dessert, Harvey's on Noble will not disappoint, and the atmosphere is perfect for catching the big game or just relaxing after work. Harvey's is open for dinner Wednesday through Saturdays, so round up the family and we'll see you at Harvey's on Noble, downtown Sulacaga. 
We are so excited now to be joined by Coach Philip Rivers from St. Michael's after his impressive win over Orange Beach. Coach Rivers, tell us what you thought about that game. Get four yards and just felt good about running it with our guys into the boundary. And, and Ezra did a great job. The line did a great, great job and went and got it. But uh, that offense is good. Now that quarterback and uh, number one and, and seven and six. And uh, so they could score in a hurry. And, our, you know, our, our D was rolling early and got some stops. And then they were struggling a little bit late. And, uh, and we just wanted to go ahead and try to see if we could put it away right there at midfield. Well, Coach, in recent years, you have made what, what could be a difficult transition from NFL quarterback to head high school football coach. Tell us a little bit about that transition and, re and really how that's worked in your life. You know, I, I, got to, I got to live my dream and play, you know, NFL quarterback for 17 years. And, of course, you know, my dad was a longtime coach in, in Alabama, in the Alabama Hall of Fame. And, and, it, and I always wanted to end up coaching high school football. So I'm really continuing getting to live a dream, just although it, in, with a headset and a, and a cap on. But uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, I, it's been a, it's definitely, definitely been an adjustment. Some of the, uh, you know, it's, it's different when you go with the best in the world and then come to this level from a football standpoint. But what's great about it is you've got a bunch of young guys that may play. This is their last. These are the last five six eight games maybe you know who knows uh the, the, this is their last level of football and i think that's what's so awesome about it to me is that it's the whole young man uh, we want them to be better for having played in our program and that's what makes it so awesome for me and that's why i love it so much and getting i'm, I'm gonna get to coach my boys my sons and and uh, i see the girl i see my daughters in the hallway at school so it's it's been a lot of fun uh and then you get to do this and they keep scoring and you get to compete with a group of guys with a team so uh all in all i just feel very blessed i've enjoyed the heck out of it well thank you coach i love what you said about the whole young man that's really what it's all about especially in Alabama high school athletics thanks for being with us we'll be right back in just a moment and we'll rejoin the crew with the game already in progress at Gordo thanks for watching the halftime show I'm Susan Carruthers it's been brought to you by Amherst retirement planning investment planning education planning ad valorem blah 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 Financial planners love to show their version of a perfect retirement, but what about your perfect retirement? At Amfirst Financial, we'll get to know you first, so we can make a plan for the person you'll be years from now, and future you will be glad we planned ahead. So call Amfirst Financial today. You'll thank you later. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Alabama. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the AHSAA. Get in the game, Alabama. Now is the time to buy with more value and selection from the power of three. Get more from Sarah Nissan in Birmingham, Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman, and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga. We know used cars better than anyone. Sarah has hard-to-find inventory arriving daily from around the country with over 1,200 pre-owned cars and trucks available to choose from. We work hard to earn your business. Sarah Nissan in Birmingham, Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman, and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga. Serving Alabama since 1981. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. And we are back in Gordo as we continue here at halftime. It is a 14-point lead for the home team on senior night. Final home game of the season for Gordo. They lead their rivals from Fayette County 14 to nothing. And what is a pretty important Class 3A Region 5 matchup. Both these teams are unbeaten in region play coming in this late in the season. This is essentially a region championship game. It really is. Both of them are ranked in the top 10 in the state. You know, a huge game. And uh, you got to remember that Fayette County is a team that's averaging almost right at 45 points a game, and they got a zero uh, for the first half. So the, the Gordo defense and, and, and really – uh, a big turnover right there, and Brax Garrison, I mean, I mean, that's been the difference. Yeah, and a lot of laundry on the field in the first half that really kind of affected the rhythm for both teams at times, especially 
uh, Fayette County. They did have two good drives in that first half, but as you mentioned, no points. And, you know, Coach, when we look at highlights, you and I both know number six, uh, Charles Grant, he was clearly the highlight for Fayette County. Well, he's just been magnificent uh, for Fayette County. Runs a lot bigger than his 150 pounds. Uh, but just uh, this is the end of a first drive, and that's kind of the way it, it, it ended. Just couldn't get anything going, and Gordo will get momentum right away. They'll, they'll run this big young man down the field. Brax Garrison, the quarterback, did a good job in the air. Short passes, but they were very effective, and, of course, the power running game was really, really tough for Fayette County to stop. They mixed in just enough of, of their passing game to keep the, the defense honest, but that power game, as you said, particularly with uh, Garrison running the football was just so effective. Here's a look at Charles Grant. Again, the one bright spot for Fayette County. He had some huge runs, and this was one of the few times that the Gordo defense was able to wrap him up and contain him in the first half. But just not much working outside of Grant for Fayette County offensively. Now, really, really struggling. Again, this is a team that has scored lots of points. Big interception right there to set uh, Fayette County up again, but just not able to connect. And then this is the play of the first half. Max Stevenson with the big pick. He returns it back down to around the one-yard line. Then Brax Garrison, the quarterback, would wind up taking it in. Two short touchdown runs. He's accounted for both scores in the game here at halftime. 14-0, Gordo in the lead. We will continue in just a moment. It's almost that time of year again. Well, we already know the outcome. Roll Tide. No, not that game. I'm talking about scoring the Game of the Week special at Sunny King Ford. Right now, you can save $30 on any set of tires at the Quick Lane at Sunny King Ford. Just mention the Game of the Week special. Only at Sunny King Ford. That's right, Sunny King Ford on the sunny side of the street, Anniston, Oxford. Now, that's a catch. Retirement planning, investment planning, education planning, ad valorem, blah, 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 blah. Financial planners love to show their version of a perfect retirement, but what about your perfect retirement? At AmFirst Financial, we'll get to know you first so we can make a plan for the person you'll be years from now, and future you will be glad we planned ahead. So call AmFirst Financial today. You'll thank you later. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Alabama. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the AHSAA. Well, it was quite a senior night show before the game tonight. As we mentioned, the uh, senior night here tonight for Gordo High School. We didn't just have the football players, Coach. We had band members and, and every senior. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, everything represented right there. And we're going to quickly join Coach Porter for Fayette County joining us here at halftime. Coach. Uh, you had a couple of really good drives in that first half. No points to show for it. Talk about what you said to your team in the locker room. Look, I just challenged them to, you know, run the ball effectively like we've been doing. You know, we've had, we sustained good drives early in the game and, uh, you know, mental mistakes. You know, I've challenged them at halftime, quit making those. You know, I had a couple bad reads that ended up seven points for them. And, uh, you know, our defense played not bad, honestly. You know, they played really well, limited them really to seven points. We gave up seven on offense. We just got to execute. Execute, you know, stay with the game plan and uh, run the ball effectively this half. Coach, everybody uh, fit, everybody well for the second half? Yeah, everybody's healthy right now. Coach Jared Porter, thank you for taking a moment, Coach, and good luck in the second half. All right, thank you. All right, Fayette County Coach Jared Porter joining us here at halftime. His team uh, you could tell he's frustrated because they uh, he, he makes a good point this is a Gordo team you mentioned how many points Fayette County's been averaging Gordo's offense has been the same but to hold them to really one offensive score because he's talking about the interception which basically his offense giving them that touchdown 
Right. And, and, you know, the thing that I think really kind of permeates their team right now is a lot of frustration. I mean, it, you kind of kind of saw it uh, in the players' eyes a little, a little bit with Coach right there, which is very natural to have right here. I mean, you're, you're averaging 45 points a game. A football field is a pinball for you. And all of a sudden, you're having a hard time moving the football. And got to got to give credit to the to the Gordo uh, defense. They played very well. But, uh, you know, I think Fayette County is going to come out and, uh, and probably play much better this half. Fayette County did win the toss uh, and deferred. So they will get the football to begin the second half. And, boy, that's an opportunity for them. I think it's, you know, we say every week the last five minutes of each half, the first five minutes of, of each half. But, hey, this is a huge game for a region, probably a region championship. These first five minutes are going to be super crucial. And the Sarah Automotive kickoff. We are underway with the second half and tough handling the kick there. That's not how you want to start. No, and it's going to be poor field position inside the 10 yard line. Good job hustling downfield that time by Jace Neal for Gordo on special teams. Well, this is a this is a saying out of the out of the past, I guess. You don't hear it as much in the South anymore as you used to, but you know, Fayette County's got to get their stinger back. I mean that's that that's that's where it is. They 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 just look a little out of sync, maybe a little bit uh, uh, not shell shocked, but kind of wondering why things aren't going better. You you gotta put all that aside. Oh, you, you just gotta control what you can control, which is first and ten right now. And this is actually Schlurb out of the Wildcat, a formation they tried about three times in the first half, but not much there. Well defended on the run play there by Gordo. Now, and again, I think really the big story of this game to this point is how well the Gordo defensive front seven have played against uh, the, the Fayette County offensive line. They have won uh, the battles the majority of the day. So second down, and again, tough job fielding the kickoff has given Fayette County very poor field position. Second down and eight, they keep it on the ground. First carry of the night for Maurice Harris, and he is going nowhere. Again, a great play defensively. I think that was Cole Somerville that getting the job done on the defensive side. Yeah, and, and he, he looks the part, that's for sure, and he's saying, not my side, guys. And, uh, but you can see, again, Stamets right there. And watch these green shirts get off blocks. And, of course, uh, Somerville was untouched. And this is not the way that Fayette County wanted to start this half. It all started with the kickoff. So third and seven for Fayette County inside their own 12-yard line. Johnson passes away and caught and boy this is going to be if he gets a spot it's going to be a huge first down and it is an am first first down out at the 20-yard line reception made by Cooper Sanford but Johnson threaded the needle here yeah this is his best pass of the night very authoritative throw ball right on the money for a big big first down Sanford coming in 18 catches on the year three touchdown receptions Huge catch there. Moves the chains, first and 10. Johnson with a give up the middle and a good gain on first down there by Dylan Schlurb. And it's interesting how you get a good play, coach. All of a sudden you loosen up, momentum kind of gets on your side a bit. You wind up with a nice gain on first down. You know, a, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of daylight, whatever cliche you want to use. You know, it, I mean, success breeds success, and just a little momentum can, can get you going. Can they sustain it? Second down and four. Slurb again, and he is wrapped up. Somerville was there, and again, that number 53, Cameron Prude, was in on the tackle also. Yeah, just tough going inside. Got a couple just with good, tough running, but uh, not, not much. You see the green shirts? Getting off those blocks. Slurb came in tonight averaging 7.2 yards a carry. He has not been, gotten anywhere near that tonight. Not against this Gordo defense. It's a big, big third and two right here. Gordo with all 11 in the box. 
Johnson will hand it off. Slurb hit behind the line of scrimmage, but fell forward, and it's all about the spot. Jace Hancock made first initial contact. And they have consistently been able to get penetration into the backfield. You can see there's another hit behind the line of scrimmage, but good, good body lean, good strength to move forward. And we'll see if it's enough for a first down. Looks like it is. It, it is a huge M first first down. So that is two third down conversions for Fayette County here. And as you said, Mickey, I mean, there's 11 of them within five yards of the line of scrimmage. First down run as they run, ag run against those 11 shirts and Slurb gets a yard, maybe two at most. Well, the bad news, if if you're a uh, Fayette County fan, is it's going to be very tough to run against that. The good news is, if you get past that first wave, there ain't no second wave. No. So. There you see Johnson going out of the game. You know, I thought that Fed Kenny may, might come out and maybe open things up just a bit, but just the opposite. This is pretty compacted game right now. Slurb taking the snap, trying to get around the edge, and lost his footing, or he would have had more yardage, but he's out. Near another first down, it's going to bring up another third and short for Fayette County. Yeah, they had a lot of firepower to their left side and were able to outflank the Gordo defense just enough to, uh, to pick up uh, to pick up some nice yardage. So you got all 11 for both teams in the box. This is just hat on hat football here third down and short you see slur with a long look playcock goes under 10 so we'll see if Fayette can get the play they're off gonna have, they're gonna have a hard time getting it getting it off and they just do slurb again it's going to be close and as you can see from these first half highlights Fayette County's been aggressive going for it on fourth down twice, but they have been unsuccessful. And that's how those drives came to an end in the first half, from what looked like promising drives for Fayette yes. County. Uh, both times, you know, misfired on a pass on the first one, out of rhythm on the handoff on the second so one. So here's another fourth and one. And the offense on the field. Tried to draw him. And Slurb will not take the snap, and we're going to get a timeout taken by Fayette County. So big decision here for Fayette County. We'll see what they do when we come back from break. Already down to 5.33 here in the third quarter on Thursday Night Lights. from Rightway Auto Sales. Come see us on the Motor Mile. We have a huge inventory of cars, trucks, SUVs, and campers. Fifth wheel bumper pull. No credit needed. No credit check. You name it, we got it. Come see us at Rightway on the Motor Mile. 50 campers in stock, 50 cars and trucks, good credit, bad credit, no credit. You're approved. Come see us at Rightway Auto Sales. No credit needed. No credit check. Come see us at Rightway on the Motor Mile. And we are back, and Fayette County discussing over the options here, Coach. It's fourth and one. We always ask you, even the folks in the truck always ask, <laughs> what do you do here, Coach? What do you do here, Coach? Someone asked well, you, what do you do here, Coach? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think they're going to do. That's an awful long conversation for a kick. So, I mean, they're, I think they're going to go for it right here. 
uh, you know, I would not be a bit surprised uh, to see uh, Schlerb go off tackle again to the outside. I might be tempted to kick it here, but I don't mean that as being critical at all. If they if they go for it, they got to get they got to get some momentum going. Somebody in the, somebody in the truck just uh, just mentioned how about a punt, a punt fake pass. I, you know, I would not be a big fan of that, which means they would probably go for 60, but. So here comes the Fayette County offense, and there you see Dylan Slurb, who's been taking the snaps the last few times. It's fourth and one. This is definitely not a punt formation, Miggy. So here we go, huge, huge call. Slurb takes it, and we're going to have a penalty that's pretty much yeah, going to wind up leading us to a punt. Yeah, I think the H-back on the left side was before the snap. Take a look at it right here, number 24, I think it is. It is a little bit quick. I'm not sure they got it anyway. I didn't I see much push. So. I don't think they would have gotten it either. It may be a blessing in disguise, but the, again, another drive. Well, the snap. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still be fourth down. Reset the clock to 5.33. You know, coach, they milked a good bit of the clock there in the third the third quarter time. It took, what, six and a half? They're going to put a few more seconds back on, but still about six and a half minutes. Yeah, six and a half minutes and still a zero on the right side of that scoreboard. That's, uh, that's not insignificant. So Fayette County will punt after all. No rush at all. Get the kick out of there. And it, no return man back there for Gordo either. So it will be down at the 39. So the Green Wave defense gets the job done and the Gordo offense will come back out with the 14 point lead. Hey, remind you, you can tune in every Wednesday night at 6.30. It's the AHSAA weekly show. Tremendous 30 minute program every week. Uh, about high school sports in the state of Alabama. And it's hosted by Susan Scott Carruthers and it is presented by Amherst. And this is the time of year it gets real interesting for football fans in the state of Alabama. Good look there at uh, Javen Westbrook who went out in the first half but appears to be back in good shape. We've got an officials conference. During the kick, we had holding on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. So this will back the green wave up a bit. <laughs> well, Coach, it, <laughs> I, I, every time Fayette County's offense comes out and can't produce points, it just continues to up the ante for this Fayette County defense. I, I don't know if they can give up any more points, especially no, I, with as much time that's come off. No, the I, I, think, uh, I think that's a very good point. And, I think if Fayette County's going to, if they're going to get back in this game offensively, they're going to have to mix in the pass. You know, the thing you want to do offensively is throw when you want to, not when you have to. And I'm not sure that Fayette County's been able to do that uh, at all tonight. They haven't run it well enough to just lean on that running game. Here's the handoff to Lark. And a nice pickup here. And he will go out of bounds, but not before he picks up the Am first first down. And I tell you, Lark is a good-looking young running back. Just a sophomore, averages 10 yards a carry. Watch him make that inside cut. Shifts back there. Good, strong uh, power in his hips. Young man's got quite a future. Here's the pass out to Fawnville. Flag on the play. I think there may have been a misalignment out there in the perimeter. So it'll be a penalty against Fayette County. Too many men on the field. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. Yeah. 
Yeah, Mickey, I, th I thought you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, I mean, Fed County really has to have a stop on this drive. <laughs> Crowd getting a little restless. Oh, the crowd's been restless for a while. Substitution <laughs> on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, we get a, we get we get pretty good uh, feedback from the crowd, and they've had a, they've had opinions on just about every one of these mm -hmm. flags. So first and five after the penalty from right at midfield. Here's more of the Green Wave ground game. Lark is wrapped up from behind by Maurice Harris. But you know, when they can do this and run the ball and run the clock, have their runners stay in bounds, continue to shorten this game. Well, and, and, you know, it feels like the second half just started and we're down to four minutes mm -hmm. uh, left in the third quarter. And, uh, and, and I mean, pretty consistently, uh, the guys up front in the green jerseys have, have won the day on both sides of the ball. And Gordo is in no hurry right now. And a very favorable situation, second and two. Garrison, a little pass to Fawnville, eludes the first defender, gives him the first down and more. Still on his feet inside the 30. He's inside the 20, and he's going to score. The Harvey's on Noble touchdown as Willie Fawnville turns a simple little screen pass into a touchdown. Well, the thing that impressed, impressed me about uh, the, uh, the Gordo Green Wave research in them is how many explosive players they had, guys that could take a ball and go for six. And, you know, this looked like it was going to be about a four or five yard gain. As a matter of fact, if he hadn't avoided the first uh, uh, tackler right there, it wouldn't have gone anywhere. And then he turns on the Jets and we're lining up for an extra point. Just great explosive football. And the Sunny King extra point is good as Caleb Jennings is perfect tonight. Three for three on PAT. So it is now a three score lead, 21 to nothing. You know, just a little simple hit screen to the outside, avoided that first tackler, and then outran the Fayette County defense down the sideline. What a job by this Gordo defense. And then a nice play there by this young man, Fonville. And you mentioned it, the move at the line of scrimmage to make the first guy miss. And then it was a sprint to the end zone, and he outran the rest of the defense. Yeah, you know, the, the speed of, uh, of their running backs was impressive looking at them. They've certainly shown it, shown it tonight. And... Uh, uh, Willie's just kind of business as usual. You know, let me get a drink of water. Let's go out and get another one. You know, you mentioned Piedmont. We saw them a few weeks ago with the way they play with Hayes at quarterback and the way Gordo plays with Garrison at quarterback. Kind of looks a little similar in some ways, doesn't it? Uh, it does, very much so, yeah. And this kick will bounce out of bounds inside the 20. So this will help out the Tigers as they'll start from the 35. Well, needless to say, I mean, they need to score. This is a team that averages 45.5 points per game, and they and tonight they have not. Free kick infraction, kicking team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. I thought that was a pretty interesting uh, free kick infraction. Let's fake the onside kick. Let's have another guy kick it, then let's kick it out of bounds. What do you think, Mickey? Yeah. So Gordo will re-kick. We're having a hard time getting this uh, next series started here, partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, we think Coach Porter wants more time on the clock. I'm sure he would like to start over in some ways. This is fielded on the run by Grant. Grant's out across the 40s to the 42-yard line. So that's where Fayette County will finally start the next possession when we line them up here. 323 play here in this third quarter. Well, this is obviously a must drive for, for the Tigers. It's been tough going for them. Fayette County again averaging 45 points a game and they have yet to score here against their rivals from Gordo. Been a long, frustrating night to this point, but hey, we still got a quarter and some change to go. And another stoppage. Time out. Play it. So out of all that time delay, Fayette County calls a timeout. So not sure what that is about. And they need to hold on to those. There goes one there. Well, it's been a frustrating night for everybody in in uh, in white, and just not much has gone right after that first drive. Just trying to find something that they can get some positive success with and build on it and get some momentum going and see if they can't catch lightning in a bottle here for a minute. You know, and if they hold on and lose this game, Coach, they've got to play Winfield next week in their final home game. And, you know, the Winfield-Gordo game was a pretty tight game, 49-42. Yeah. So if Fayette County cannot come back and win this game, they certainly would like to finish it stronger than they played so far. Quick pass is incomplete right through the hands of Cooper Sanford. Yeah, it looked like... Uh Sanford tried to run with it before he got it, and uh, just the frustration continues for that young man right there. It's been been tough going. And we have hit a snail's pace now. Yeah, we were moving pretty good. We've blown two tires. <laughs> Tough, tough down here, second and 10. After the first down incompletion, pass is complete here, but tackle behind the line of scrimmage. So Cooper caught that one, but he's taken down for a loss. Yeah, there were you know two blockers out front, three defenders in the area, just can't get them all blocked. And the end result was pretty predictable. Uh, Jay Cotton with a big hit out there. It brings up now third and really long yardage. So Johnson on third and 13. Play clock down to five. Little reverse action. Here comes Got Sanford the around the edge and good pursuit to catch up to him there is Gordo got Jace Hathcock along with Blaine Chandler, but a flag comes in. Yeah, really good pursuit. Uh, Chandler finished it off, but we did see a flag late, so we'll have another stoppage. Came well at the end of the play. I don't know whether this is going to be a, a personal foul. Blind side block right there. Yep. Yeah, 
that was a, it was a seven on seven right there. And again, blocking back uh, against the grain, which you can't do anymore. Coach Porter getting the explanation from a couple of officials. I tell you, these these situations are just taking a good bit of time and both coaches out onto the field talking to each of them talking to two officials. Yeah, you know, I really think that we have, of course, we want to, you know, two officials. fouls during the down. We got a live ball, blindside block on the offense. That's a 15 yard penalty. Dead ball and sports like conduct on the defense. The 15 yard penalty will replay third down. Okay. You know, you know, obviously you want to get it right. So you need to take as much time as you need to, but boy, it sure does seem like these conferences get longer and longer uh, every year. And uh, so like there needs to be a way to make the call. And right now we've got a 30-yard parade where we go 15 in one direction and then 15 back the other way, and then we'll play third down. So after all of that, third down and nine. You are correct, sir. Gordo brings the blitz. Johnson throws downfield. Receiver wide open. That is Sanford. That's going to be a huge M first first down inside Gordo territory. How do you get that open, coach? Well, you know, they're going to bring six man pressure, which normally means man coverage. And if that's the case, somebody was not in man. And you saw the, the flat defender out there. I think it might have been Jace Hathcock. Uh, that uh, that may very well have been his man, or perhaps it was Kyson Pape, but whichever it was, obviously that's a wide open receiver and a huge play for Fayette County. First down at the 29. The drive continues. Johnson with time, airs it out to the end zone, incomplete. Yeah, just a straight fly pattern and it was Pretty well covered, but there was a pocket to drop that ball into, but well overthrown and just, just uh, an errant throw. So second down and 10. Johnson leaves it with Grant, and he runs right into Cole Somerville, who was in the backfield. Well, they consistently have been able to stunt a defender two yards behind the line of scrimmage. They've done that a lot tonight, kind of establish a new line of scrimmage and just nowhere to go, as you see the frustration on Charles Grant's face right there. Two minutes to play here in the third quarter. It is a third down for Fayette County. Third down and 13 now. Here comes pressure once again by Gordo. Johnson steps up in the pocket, still looking downfield, and then will be sacked back at the 38-yard line by Cameron Lark. That's a really nice job uh, by uh, uh, by Lark of, of uh, retracing and working back to the outside. Pretty good protection in, initially. Able to scramble outside, but but Lark uh, mirrored that pretty well, retraced and made uh, made the big sack. So it's fourth down. Bay County really taking their time very, every down. Very, very deliberate for, you know, being down three scores. They 
just get the playoff. Here comes pressure again, and Johnson's pass is intercepted down at the 19-yard line by Gordo's Ethan Wilder, and the Green Wave defense once again for the third time tonight. They bend, but they don't break, and frustration continues for Blake Johnson and this Fayette County offense. Well, they had Cole Somerville that came on a delayed blitz right in his face when he threw it. Really not that bad a throw, but a great break on the ball defensively and really not not much of an, uh, of an attempt to go get that football offensively. Heads up play by Ethan Wilder. Second interception of the game for this Gordo That's a defense. Sideline warning on Gordo. <laughs> first one of the game. Have we had a game without a sideline warning this year, Coach? We have not. That's uh, that's that's what's in vogue this year. Is uh, I don't know whether <laughs> they, need, they need to have a clinic on that. I think. As a former coach, what do you think about the sideline warning? Uh, I thought it was a nuisance. Yeah. But I tell you what happened to me once I weren't understood. I got run into once by that by that uh, side judge trying to do his job, mm -hmm. and we're lucky we're lucky that both of us weren't hurt. So I, I kind of had a new respect for it. You, after you that. get the rule right. Yeah. <laughs> First down, Lark hit behind the line of scrimmage. That's one of the few times that Fayette County's had a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. That was Dominic Ruby, number 50. And that'll be the end of the third quarter. It is all Gordo tonight here at Green Wave Stadium. The Green Wave with a 21-0 lead as we head into the fourth quarter. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amfirst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. Uncle Marcus, will you tell us a story about King Boys again? Sure. Well, it all started back in 2008. 2008? We didn't have all the fancy toy equipment we do now, but we did have a service and a desire to help our customers. You see, kids, you must train your mind and your body to be able to help the people you call customers. When they call on us, it's showtime. Understand me, King Boy's mission is to help when people are in need. So what's our motto, cheering? King, King Boy's forever! Get in the game, Alabama. Now is the time to buy with more value and selection from the power of three. Get more from Sarah Nissan in Birmingham, Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman, and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga. We know used cars better than anyone. Sarah has hard-to-find inventory arriving daily from around the country with over 1,200 pre-owned cars and trucks available to choose from. We work hard to earn your business. Sarah Nissan in Birmingham, Tony Sarah Nissan in Coleman, and Sarah Nissan of Sylacauga. Serving Alabama since 1981. And we are back, fourth quarter beginning now, and Gordo taking over on offense. First and 10 at the 25. And here is Fonville, and Fonville with a gain of about four yards. Stays inbounds, which keeps that clock moving. And they'll probably work the clock a little bit right here. Of course, Fonville had the the big run after the catch on the screen. So quarterback Brax Garrison came in with pretty good numbers already. Two rushing touchdowns tonight and the touchdown pass as coach just mentioned to Fonville. Yeah, that, that gets him up to 21 for the year. Second down, looking to throw here. Lobs it downfield, incomplete. It was intended for Fonville down at the 40, so that will stop the clock with 11.05 here. Yeah. Uh, Fonville was, was running a deep, deep crossing route, but just a little bit late uh, with a throw and not really quite enough on it. So they elect to throw the ball there after a pretty good gain on first down, so now it's third down. Or fourth down, I should say. So Gordo will have to punt it back to Fayette County. And coach, here we go. They again, we keep saying it, but Fayette County is going to have to get something 
pretty quickly. Yeah, they really have not been able to get anything of any consistency. And this will roll dead at 30. So there's your starting quarterback, Blake Johnson. Getting final word from his coach. You know, 10.50 in the fourth quarter, down three scores. I mean, that, that's not impossible. It's not. It's happened before, but they're going to have to, they're going to have to get a spark. You know, sometimes you just have to, to forget about everything except the moment, and that moment is one play at a time. And a good play on first down is, is very important. Crucial. Johnson, little screen pass. They had it set up well. This is Strawbridge and a nice game for 15 yards out to the 45 yard line for the Amherst first down. Yeah, this is just running back screen. You can see running back slips out to the right of your screen. He's got blockers out in front. Very well uh, negotiated by the Tigers. And uh, that's just what the doctor ordered. Picks up a big first down. down out at the 45. Johnson with a clean pocket, airs it deep downfield, incomplete down at the 26-yard line. It was intended for Harrison Unger the first time that Unger has been targeted tonight. Yeah, and just really uh, not much chance of that one. Very well defended, just kind of thrown up for grabs and brings up this second down and 10. You see a little bit of frustration there between Johnson and his receiver. It's been a frustrating night. Not a lot of things have gone well. Formation problem right there. This has been a tough Gordo defense to work against tonight for sure. Here's the handoff to Grant. Haven't seen him in a while. And Grant picked up a couple of yards to the 47. So here's a third down and eight for the Tigers. You almost wonder if uh, if Fade County will consider this four down territory with the time and the score. And if they get half of it on third down, wouldn't be surprised at all to see him to go for it on uh, fourth down. So third and eight. Johnson gets rid of it quickly. It's caught by Sanford, but he was very well covered that time by Quartarius White and Cole Somerville. Yeah, ran the slant off of that RPO look and stuck it in there in a very tight window, but still going to be about two or three yards short. So it's fourth down, a down that Fayette County has not had much success with tonight. like that Fayette is Fayette County is going to is going to punt. Play clock under 10. They've already used one timeout. They've got Schlerb in there and they're gonna have to they're gonna have to burn their second timeout. Coach Porter showing that frustrated as well. Just a lot of frustration in the Fayette County camp here. Come out Fayette. Yeah, and it really started, uh, you know, pretty early in the first half, and they just have not been able to get back on track. So fourth and two, we'll see what they do coming out of the timeout. We'd like to thank our friends at Sarah Automotive, three great locations to serve you. You're in the market for a new car or a used vehicle. You'll find a great selection at Sarah Automotive, Sarah Ford, Sarah Nissan, Sarah Honda. Coach Porter preaching to his team there in the huddle. He was frustrated that they did not get out and get lined up. It took some time to figure out what they were going to do there and cost them their second timeout. 
Yeah, back to the Wildcat set. So fourth down and three. Slurb in there in the Wildcat. Takes it. And is not going to get there. He's going to be a yard short. He needed the 45. They're going to mark him at the 46. And another failed fourth down attempt here for this Tiger offense. Well, that's kind of the story of the night. They tried to run the power back to their right to their right side. I think they really ran it a little bit into the numbers right here. At the formation to the left, but the defense was pretty balanced and couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage clean and then a whole bunch of green shirts. So now Gordo will come back out on offense, first and 10 at the 46. Garrison on the keeper. And he rumbles down to the 40 yard line for a pickup of 14 and an am first first down for the green wave. They've been giving off, uh, you know, that that uh, zone read all night. This time he sees the defensive end bite to the inside and nobody outside. And he takes advantage of that, and picks up a nice game. So we have a Porto player down on the field. That is number 12, Caleb Jennings. And it looks like that might be a little bit serious. That ankle was a little bit funny angle. Sure hope not. Good game for this young man, though. And he's been impressive. He really has. Big, strong youngster that can run and throw. You know, his numbers coming into this game were pretty impressive. 348 yards rushing, 7.1 yards per carry, 1,290 yards passing, 20 TDs, and only one interception. Threw for 248 last week and four TDs. It looks like they're going to be a minute on the field looking at Caleb Jennings' injured leg. So we're going to take a look at some rankings. Coach, we'll start at the top of the heap in Class 7A, and Auburn is is rolling this year. They're still unbeaten going into this week's play at 7-0, and oh, and a lot of the big names right there in the top 10. You know, you look at that right-hand column, and usually there's three or four that have that, that goose egg, but only one. Uh, of course, Thompson lost too early uh, uh, as, you look at, as you look at 6A. Um, very, very uh, tough, uh, balanced 6A field right here. There's a lot of good football teams in, in that bunch. Uh, saw Clay Chalkville the, the other night against uh, Thompson. They're really, really explosive. Mountain Brook, uh, you know, they're typical Mountain Brook, uh, very uh, uh, much oriented to lots of different shifts, very polished. Uh, they're going to be in the thick of it. Hartzell looks like they've got a great team. Uh, Decatur is still unbeaten. Uh, also, Shoals and Atlanta are very good. Sarah Land, of course, at the top. I expect they're probably pretty good, too. <laughs> And in class 5A, look at the top of there. You got UMS Wright, Leeds, and Moody. Boy, they're having a, a really good year so far. And of course, Pleasant Grove and Ramsey uh, right in the thick of things also. Yeah, another strong division right there. Those three at the top uh, are real powerhouses. Pleasant Grove, uh, another really good team. Ramsey has had a great year. Gulf Shores lost a close one early. I think they're going to be in the hunt as well. Uh, you know, the top 10 in each of these divisions, just so many good football teams in the state of Alabama. And in class 4A, there you see you've got four unbeatens there, and we had the opportunity to see the Aniston Bulldogs a few weeks ago at Piedmont, and uh, what, a, what a season Aniston is having, and they haven't had this type of year in a long, long time. And then you still uh, have some big names there. You got Hanley there at number five, Jacksonville hanging in there, and. Hanley's only loss was to Aniston last week, and that was an imp that that may be as, as impressive as the Jacksonville win, the Piedmont win, the win over Hanley. The way they won that game may be their most impressive win of yeah. the season. Very very talented team. Uh, you know, have not seen Montgomery Catholic, but over the last few years they've really developed a great program, and uh, probably will be there when it's all over with as well. And of course, right now the number one 
ranked 4A team in the state. So, um, you know, top to bottom, very, very good. Class 3A, which is the game that we're featuring here tonight, two teams from Class 3A. You've got Gordo ranked number two, and they're looking every bit the part of that for sure, the way they're playing here tonight in Fayette County there at number nine. But uh, the Piedmont Bulldogs, four of the last 3A state championships, reside at Piedmont High School, and they, uh, they're they definitely a contender again. And so uh, this will be an interesting uh, classification to watch as well. Well, to be the champ, you got to beat the champ. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the way it is. Class 2A, Fife. It always starts with Fife in <laughs> Class 2A. Well, you know, the, the story of that program is really legendary. I mean, the way they do it, uh, uh, the, the culture in the community, the record that they've had just, I mean, you know, there's not many places in this country that can say those kind of things. Uh, Highland Homes got, the, got a great team, probably their best team in a long time. Um, but um, uh, but two A belongs to Fife until somebody proves otherwise. And then of course in Class One A we take a look at uh, their Elba at the top, Leroy Linden, and Brantley, a familiar name as well. Valleyhead Spring Garden having another good year. And so, Coach, uh, again, as a lot of the usual suspects as we go through this thing every week, and. Uh, an update on the injury status, by the way, of Caleb Jennings. They're bringing the card out for him, so they appear to have stabilized his leg, and we certainly wish the best for this young man. You really hate to see an injury like this happen this late in the season, especially for a senior, which is the status for Caleb Jen Jennings. Yeah, of course, you know, football is a wonderful game, but this part of it is not wonderful. I mean, the injury part of it is always the toughest part. I mean, it, it can... It can change on a dime, and that, that ankle did look like it was at a funny angle, and, and that face really says it all right there. You know, you put so much into this. Uh, again, uh, you know, he's you know he's a senior, uh, and, and he knows that uh, this season may be over. And it just, uh, wars don't say anything there as well as the expression on his face does right there. We wish him the best. Hope it's not nearly as serious as it looks right now. <laughs> Been through that in my family. You know, I've got a, I've got a grandson that his senior year, zero games, broke his collarbone before the first game. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, you know, you don't, he's not going to get redshirted for another year or he's not going to, uh, you know, be back next year for a, a bonus. I mean, this is when you're done, you're done. And the home crowd cheering the young man as he is carted off the field here well, with we the left him, leg, lower leg injury. We wish him the very best, and as I said, hope it's not nearly what it appears to be right now. So Brax Garrison will lead the team back out. Ordo just looking to run the clock now with his 21 point lead here in the fourth quarter. They've got first and 10 at the Fayette County 39. off to Lark. Huge hole right up the middle. And he's close to another M first, first down as he was tackled that time by Mason Dixon along with Cooper Sanford. He has a little outside stunt uh, uh, by uh, Maurice Harris, the left defensive tackle. But there was no coordination back to the inside and that gap was exposed. And boy, that young man found it and got in the secondary in a hurry. He's had a good game, solid game. Well, I've, I've said before, I'm going to say it again, I've really been impressed by the depth of the speed uh, on this Gordo offense. They got a lot of guys that, that can take it to the house. Using as much of the play clock as they can. Lark wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage by a trio of Tiger defenders. Yeah, I think Brian Watts, the, the senior 
<clears throat> inside linebacker was right there, wrapped him up, and not much on that one. Bordeaux accomplishing what they want here. They are milking the clock as we will go now under seven minutes to play. Yeah, the, the, the pace here is, is, shall we say, deliberate. Complete. And stepping out of bounds is Ethan Wilder as Gordo is back in the AFS red zone with the Amp first first down. They're going to spot him out at the 13. And he's a guy that we haven't heard as much from tonight as I thought we would. He looked right here at the stop. And unless something changes, why, you know, Gordo will have sole possession of first place. And again, Fayette County has to play Winfield next week. Gordo will hit the road and play at Oakland. Oakland is three and one in the region. And that could be a tough game coming off a big game like this on the road. Clark staying on his feet, breaking tackles and is gonna be out of bounds inside the five yard line. It's gonna be a first and goal. That's a great run by Lark. I mean, he's gonna, Make about four people miss. There's one, two, three, four, and they finally get him inside the three. So first and goal at the two yard lines. Gordo looking to add on to the lead here. And I think that's encroachment. Full snap, encroachment on the defense, half the distance to the goal, first down. One thing you learn, you learn early is being involved in the game of football, it's not hard to tell how things are going. All you gotta do is read in the eyes and <laughs> you know pretty quick. Here's Lark, and he is hit well behind the line of scrimmage. First man there was Brian Watts, so this play will lose about four yards. Yeah, brought uh, both outside edge players at the snap, and uh, both of them untouched and uh, just nowhere to go. They almost they almost beat the, beat the snap back there. Second down and goal. Got a stoppage of play at the six minute mark. We will take the break. We return to Green Wave Stadium in just a moment. is the place for you. On Thursday nights at 7 p.m., veteran broadcaster Mickey Shadrick and former high school state champion and collegiate national champion Coach Rick Rhodes bring you live coverage of the AHSAA TV Network Game of the Week presented by Amherst. Friday nights at 7 p.m., it's the TV24 Game of the Week presented by Sunny King 4. And the action continues Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. with an encore presentation. Drummond's Company, Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week right here on WOTM. Now, don't you love the, the, the trim shrub there with the G here at Greenway no, Stadium? No, it's, it's very nice, cool. It? Those, are, those things are easier said than done. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time we tried to put Troy State Trojans in our end zone with marble? Well, by the time we got to noon, it went from Troy State Trojans to Troy. <laughs> hey, by the way, tell us about this weekend. Well, we're going down uh, Saturday for the 35th reunion of the 87 National Championship team. Right. We've been invited back to campus. Hopefully we'll have a lot of guys there. I think we will. And 
great bunch of guys that, of course, you know, won it all. And uh, very nice of the university to to recognize them. We're, we're really looking forward to it, Mickey, and I appreciate you asking about it. I hope you guys have a great, great weekend. And the weather looks good, too. Yep. Garrison is going to bull his way into the end zone for his third rushing touchdown of the night. The Harvey's on Noble touchdown, and you see him pointing to his fingers. <laughs> I think he's saying, I think he's saying he wants a ring, and they're going to be in the hunt. They've been impressive tonight. This is just this power off tackle. You can see kick out, double lead through, one on one with the safety, and the safety is no match for that young man on that particular play. Strong contender for big time entertainment player of the game. Garrison with three touchdown rushes and a touchdown pass. They go for two because their place kicker, Caleb Jennings, was just taken off the field. So the Sunny King extra point will be a two point try and it will be very successful. No resistance at all as Cole Somerville just kind of waltzes in. Yeah, just uh, really un untouched. And it has been all Gordo. The boys in green have been very impressive. They certainly have. I don't think anyone would have predicted this type of score either way going in. No, this game has been much, much different than I thought it would be. Just bulls his way into the end zone. Well, you can see he's pointing to that ring finger. He, he, wants, he wants that ring. And to repeat what our truck said to us, he's got a long way to go. And I don't mean that negative. I mean, they're going to be right in the hunt. But we're just not getting started. And that man knows it. But he's got to be happy. Uh, he looks like he's from that breed of coaches that never smiles, but he's he's got to be happy inside. His guys have played really, really well tonight. And that young man's been outstanding. Well, anyone associated with 3A football in the state that's watching tonight, they've been put on notice. This team is one to watch. Yes, sir. Well, you know, very good defense, lots of speed, and a quarterback that can make, uh, can make the difference. Now losing their kicker, that, that that's uh, that could be uh, that could be important. And the Sarah Automotive kickoff bounces around is going to be recovered by Gordo. So add insult to injury here as the Green Wave jumps on the loose football as Fayette County can't cleanly feel the kickoff. With the Gordo well, offense right back out on the field. Yeah, a little bit of backspin right there. You can see it looked like it looked like a wedge, not my wedge, but a you know, but a good wedge. Been kind of bitten backed up, and I think it really fooled the receiver a little bit. And really nice heads up play to get on that football. Watch this thing kick and back up. Mickey, that might be what your wedge looks like, not mine. Mm -hmm. Nice heads up play right there by uh, Jace Kuhn, the senior safety. So Brax Garrison comes back out. Thought his night might be done. Play clock down to five. Here's the handoff. And I believe this is Cortland Taylor on the carry. Nope, correction, that was Lark. Pretty tough yardage right there. Tried to cut back again that he's done so well tonight, but not much that time. Gordo will huddle up and obviously milk the play clock. Second down and eight. Well, you got to say that this is this team is going to be a title contender. They've been really, really impressive tonight. They snap it with one second. Lark is going to score another touchdown. Harvey's on noble touchdown. Lark into the end zone. Uh, caught the defensive end upfield. Got inside of him, outran the uh, first pursuit lane, and then just kind of weaved his way through the rest of the defense. And the rest, is, as they say, is history. You're going to see big upfield pressure by the defensive end of that side. Turns on the speed right here. It just outruns the uh, Fayette County defense to the end zone on that counter play. The man's had a big night. And the Sunny King extra point. 
as Jace Neal, the backup place kicker, misses wide left. He had plenty of leg on it, but hit it good. And I believe that was a straight on kicker. 35 to nothing now the score. And remind you to tune in next Thursday night. We'll go ahead and look ahead since this one is well decided. We'll be up in the Huntsville area. Sparkman versus Huntsville in a key 7A matchup. 7 o'clock kickoff Thursday night lights next week presented by Amherst. And so there is Jace Neal has it teed up. And Kick it off again to Fayette County. And I think with, especially in light of the injury to Caleb Jennings, I think it's in both these teams' best interest now that this game concludes. Yeah, I don't want to get anybody else hurt. I mean, I, the contest, as they say, is decided. Nice return here by Fayette County. It's Charles Grant again. Just a great game for this young man. Got a bright future ahead of him. He, he really has been the bright spot for Fayette County. As we get a look at Blake Johnson coming out, it's been a rough night, but you got to run your ball club and. Keep playing, and it's just part of the job. And a little bit of a surge over that left side. Football came out of there, I think. It'll wound up being a good game for Grant as he comes up a little bit gimpy. And again, that's what we were just talking about. Neither one of these teams needs any injuries at this point in this type of game because they both have a lot of football left ahead of them this year. Yes, they do. And, uh, and uh, you know, Fayette County can certainly rally the troops and just their first loss of the, uh, loss of the year. And you know, football is a funny game. What's, what is white on Monday sometimes looks black on Friday. You just, you just keep playing. Johnson close to a first down as we'll look ahead to the Gordo schedule. We've already been telling you that they will travel to Oakman next week, who is three and four overall, three and one in region play going into this week's action. And then they will wrap up their season at Hell County. So again, this is the final home game of the year for Gordo. Well, and you know, you have you have a big emotional game and with a big win, then you got to go on the road the next week. It's one of those trap games that you got to be careful. First and 10 from the Gordo 49. And Smith will be wrapped up after a gain, or Harris, I should say, after a gain of about four. Yeah, Gordo brought, brought pressure that time, sprung the uh, inside linebacker to the top of the screen as we look at. Uh, uh, Fayette, uh, Fayette County will be at home to host Winfield, who is, again, they're having a pretty good season, 5-1 and one overall, 2-1 yeah. in the region. And they're going to have to rally and recover in a hurry. You know, they're going to have to put this one away, get back positive. Having them at home, I think, will help. But that's a big win. I don't think I don't, they certainly don't want to lose two in a row with a great start they've had. Second down and eight. There's Harris again. And runs into a trio of Green Wave defenders. And our big time player of the game is unanimous selection tonight, Mr. Brax Harrison. He had a huge game this evening running and throwing the football. He had three rushing touchdowns. He threw for a touchdown pass tonight, and he is. Just done a great job, coach, of just being in charge of things for Gordo offensively and been, been an effective leader in this in this very key Region 5 game tonight. Yeah, he, he really has been every bit as impressive as we were led to believe that he would be and a very deserving player. Johnson's pass to Strawbridge is complete, just short of the first down as we go under two to play. Well, and this is, you know, from Fed County perspective, this is the way you want to close it out. You want to keep playing. You want to, you want to get something positive out of it. It's been a tough night, certainly a disappointing night. Uh, but
But the rules, the rules say you keep playing until the last whistle. Fourth down and two. Johnson to throw. Pass is incomplete. Wide of the intended receiver, Harrison Unger. So again, it has been fourth down has not been kind to Fayette County tonight. Yeah, had him open just a little bit uh, too far outside. Don't know whether the, the ball was wide or whether the route was cut off a little bit too soon, but nevertheless, the ball's gonna go over. And I think we'll see a couple of knees and kneels and that'll be it. What a dominating performance tonight. We mentioned when we spoke to Coach Smith at halftime about how his team looked dominant in that first half, and he what did he say? No, we're, we're, we're yeah. not dominant yet. He, he, he don't hear any of that. <laughs> well, I think if we get a word with him after the game, we're going to talk <laughs> about that. Bonville cuts it back up. Wisely stays in bounds. But it's another good gain. Coach, think might, might see the victory formation now. I uh, wouldn't, would not be a bit surprised. I thought I'd kind of see it on that last play, but uh, you know, Willie's averaging 9.6 yards a carry. I, I think he wanted to add to that. Under a minute to play now. Coach Smith is definitely from the stoic school of coaches. And we do see the victory formation now. And that should be the final snap of the game. And the Gordo celebration can begin and they can, they can definitely enjoy this one. This is this is big for a lot of reasons and the way they want it Definitely, definitely going to grab some attention across the state. There's no doubt about it. About as impressive a performance as you as you could see. <clears throat> 35 to nothing, shutting out a team that had been averaging 45 points a game. And we'll step aside for a break and return with more from Green Wave Stadium in just a moment. Highway is backed up. What are we gonna do? Are you serious? Get me the King Boys. King Boys Towing is the fastest growing tow and recovery company in Birmingham and surrounding areas for one reason. Our customers are our top priority. Whether your car has been in an accident, it's stuck in the driveway and won't start, or you just need a tow to your preferred repair shop, give us a call. Our fleet of flatbed tow trucks will provide courteous and fast service. King Boys Towing, 205-428-3235. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. It's almost that time of year again. Well, we already know the outcome. Roll Tide. No, not that game. I'm talking about scoring the Game of the Week special at Sunny King Ford. Right now, you can save $30 on any set of tires at the Quick Lane at Sunny King Ford. Just mention the Game of the Week special. Only at Sunny King Ford. That's right, Sunny King Ford on the sunny side of the street, Aniston, Oxford. Now that's a catch. Oh, we're back at Green Wave Stadium in Gordo. It was a happy senior night tonight, and that is score on your screen is accurate. 35 to nothing. Total domination in this football game by Gordo as Fayette County just felt the Green Wave tonight, Coach. It was 
uh, Gordo's night for sure. And we're joined now by Coach Gus Smith and Coach Mickey Shadrick, Coach Rick Rhodes with you now. And I want to take you back to halftime when we talked to you briefly. You were up 14 to nothing. We mentioned that you dominated the first half. You said, not yet, guys. Well, you dominated this football right. game, Coach. you got to admit that now. I got to admit that now for sure. And that's what I told him at halftime, too. It's not over with because, you know, we were up 13 to 6 versus Bibb, and that game got out of hand, you know, and we were on the wrong side of that. And then with the Winfield game, it was 14 uh, 13 us and uh, ended up being 49 42. So I remind them of those things. And, um, you know, we did a great job at halftime. You know, their adjustments, they came out and did a couple of different things. And, man, I'm so proud of our guys. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, you shut out a team that's been averaging 45 points a game. Just t talk to us a little bit about your defense, the game plan, uh, just, just some stuff about your defense. Yeah, we knew we had to stop, you know, their running game. We felt like they were going to get in that H-back set and try to run it at us. So, you know, we did a lot of things up front to mix them up and disguise our coverages in the back back there. Um, hey, and we got good players, and that always helps. So yeah. we just get them lined up right and, you know, let them tackle. And like I said, we just we got good players, and they played hard tonight. Coach, this the young man we're showing on the screen right now, your quarterback. Uh, what a night for Brax Garrison. Just talk about what, what he's done for you. Yeah, I, I think he's got to be mentioning that 3A player of the year right now. Every time he touches the ball, I, you know, I say it all the time. I yell it to him, and, uh, you know, he's he, he's got to be mentioning it. And, um, you know, I, th I think if we finish business and, you know, make a run deep in the playoffs. I think he'll have an opportunity for that. Um, but he, he means a lot to our team. He's, he's the biggest guy out there. So we got to put the ball in his hands and see if people can tackle him. That was kind of the game play tonight. And, um, you know, catch it and run forward. And uh, I've seen a lot of Piedmont. So he reminds me of Jack Hayes at Piedmont a little bit. Well, Coach, just a great performance by your guys. We want to congratulate you. Um, next week, got another tough one. I think you guys got to go on the road, I think. Yeah, we're going to Oakman, and uh, it's never tough at Oakman. I've I've been up there one time uh, back in 2016, and it wasn't an easy place to play. And uh, you know those guys get after, and they're always big, and so it should be a good one. Well, coach, we want to again congratulate you on the win. I I don't know going in if anybody saw this coming on either side, but this 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 is a pretty big uh, win for you. A lot of people around the state are going to take notice of the way your team played tonight. You're not going to sneak up in on anybody if you if you would have anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, you know. Going into it, we thought we could win it, but I didn't think it'd be 35 to nothing. Uh, I would have taken 35, 34. Uh, but, you know, our, our kids work hard. I've said it from the day one since I got here. I've never seen kids work this hard, and they deserve it. And so I'm, I'm just so proud of them and so proud of the Green Wave community up here. I'm Coach, just happy to be a part of it. Congratulations, Coach. We're going to look forward to watching you down the stretch. I can guarantee you that in into the postseason. Thank you. We appreciate you guys coming and doing this. It's awesome for us. All right. Congratulations, Gordo. Uh, big winners tonight and their coach joining us here at halftime. Coach Gus Smith getting the Gatorade back here. Uh, <laughs> we were stalling so they could get set up and get in place. Right, coach? Hey, we had to do our part. Yeah. You know, we... <laughs> All right, so a big win tonight for the Gordo Green Wave on Senior Night as they knock off their rival in the 76th meeting between Gordo and Fayette County. And even more important than that, the, the region implications out of this one is, is Gordo improves to 5-0 and in the region. They obviously control their own destiny with a couple of more region games to go. That'll wrap up our coverage tonight from Green Wave Stadium in Gordo. The Green Wave win it going away 35-0 for Coach Rick Rhodes and our entire WOTM crew. Thanks for tuning in to the AHSAA Thursday Night Game of the Week presented by Amherst. See you again next week from Huntsville. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amfirst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us.
or any other school or just young younger um, what advice would you give them right now to come up uh, ready to play for you in the next few years I would say you got to be able to make get over a mistake not dwell on things like we call it the next ball mentality volleyball is a game of mistakes so you're gonna make a mistake everybody is you just got to go on next one and just keep working hard